fabrics are produced on a very large scale today and the type of products are garments and lingerie items, the terrible fabrics, the gloves, the banyan, the underwears, t-shirts and sportswear, they are all made out of knitted fabrics. As was mentioned earlier, there are two types of knitted fabrics. One is the weft knitted, the other is the warp knitted. Now, warp knitted fabric has got a semblance to these woven fabrics in the sense that it is also a flat fabric and uh, it is somewhat stiffer and has got very good dimensional stability as in the case of the woven fabric and one more application of these warp knitted fabrics are in technical textiles. Technical textiles comprise items which are used in the industry. For example, a tire cord, a filter fabric, a geotextile, a building construction material or a material which is used in agriculture or a medical textile, all these are coming under the category of this technical textile. Sewing thread is also one of the items which comes under this technical textile. Now, in weft knitted fabric, we can have a flat bed type or a circular knitting machine. Usually, the flat bed types are used in the manufacture of sweaters, interlinings, collars and so many items whereas circular knitting machines are meant for producing bunion, t-shirts, sportswear and these terry towels etc. And first we will discuss something about this flatbed machine here. The needles are arranged in a row and there is a big difference between the flatbed machine and the circular knitting machine. In the circular knitting machine, the cylinder which consists of the needles rotates at a speed of 30 rpm that is revolutions per minute. Whereas in the case of the flatbed, the needle is stationary but the cam will be moving. Here the cam is stationary, cam is a system which actuates the knitting needle to go top and bottom so that knitting takes place. And there is a part called butt of the needle which moves on the cam track. So there is a rising portion, there is a falling portion. When the cylinder rotates, the cam is stationary but here the cam is moving, the needles are stationary. And the type of fabric that is obtained in flatbed machine is a very coarse one. In fact, woolen yarns are used or multiply cotton yarns are used to make a structure and uh, the fabrics can be used for various applications such as sweaters in particular by putting the stitches and also as the covering materials and collar lining for a garment. Then circular knitting machines are used in a variety of applications for producing the fabrics which are intended for say t-shirts or sportswear or uh, banyan or panty or shorts. So many items can be made and as I it was pointed out, the cylinder diameter decides the size of the garment. In Suppose we want to make a 85 centimeter banyan, then about 42 and a half inches machine is used and the dimensions of the banyan, suppose this is a banyan, the width of the banyan multiplied by 2 gives the size such as 85 centimeters. So, 42.5 into 2 is equal to 85 centimeters and this is the length of the garment. But this width is dictated by the diameter of the circular knitting machine. So, in order to produce different sizes of the bunions, it is necessary to use different types of circular knitting machine or 
a particular type of circular knitting machine cannot be used for making all types of bunions. And the gauge which is nothing but the number of needles per inch decides the fineness of the yarn, the fabric. And also something about the yarns which are used for weft knitting. We have already discussed about the corded yarns and the combed yarns in the beginning. For knitting purposes, combed yarns are generally used because they contain less number of imperfections such as thick thin nips and there are certain requirements of this yarn which are to be met in order that high quality knitted fabrics can be produced. For example, the strength of the yarn is given in terms of RKM. RKM is nothing but gram per tex. So, suppose we have a 30s yarn which is required for knitting, it should have 16 RKM and if it is 14, the performance of the fabric in knitting will suffer. So, quality of yarn that is used in web knitting is of utmost importance and the evenness and also the imperfections. And Sometimes the yarns are given the waxing treatment in winding. The aim of giving this waxing treatment to the yarn is to reduce the friction when it passes through the needle and uh, in the knitting machine and thereby the breakages of yarns are reduced. And uh, it is an integral part of the winding machine where there is a wax disc. But there is another school of thought that wax should not be used because it will interfere with the dyeing of the yarn fabric subsequently. So, uh, and it is necessary also to point out one type of yarn which has become very popular in web knitting for the last uh, maybe 30 to 40 years or so and that is called melange yarns. Now, melange yarns are those which are produced from dyed cotton and undyed cotton, mixture of dyed and undyed cotton. The percentage of dyed material in the whole yarn is ranges from 4 to 40 percent. So, when the percentage of this dyed fibers in the yarn increases, the color also shows an increase and uh, it contains mixtures of dyed and undyed material. The fibers are dyed to start with and then blended with the grey cotton and the whole thing is processed into a yarn which is called melange yarn. The idea of making this melange yarn is when a knitted fabric is made from such a yarn, it has got the color so that no dyeing is required. And, uh, the problem that is associated with the dyeing of a knitted fabric is that it is very sensitive to tension. So, any wet processing treatment that is given to a knitted fabric results in a partial damage to the fabric. So, by using these melange yarns for knitting purposes, the damage that is caused to the fabric by this tension is completely avoided and uh, there is no need to dye the fabric. Of course, in certain cases, even the fabric that is made out of melange yarn is dyed in order to create certain design aspects in the fabric. So, melange yarns are increasingly used in weft knitting today. The counts are 30 and any shade is available. The type of dye that is used for dyeing the cotton is VAT which has got exceptionally good fastness properties and this yarn has become very popular and uh, in the case of sportswear or in the case of the t-shirt, it is increasingly used. In certain cases, viscose fibers also can be blended with cotton, but mostly cotton which is dyed is blended with cotton and yarns are produced. Then filament yarns are used, then woolen yarns are used, then worsted. And two or three types of yarns are also used. For example, tens count and thirties counts are used in the fleece fabric. 
this fleece fabric has got two sides one is a technically face side the technically back side so on one side tens yarn is present on the other side 30s yarn is present the garment which is produced out of these two yarns gives a very good appearance and when garments are made and then they are subjected to a brushing treatment that means when the fabric is being brushed by a roller containing fine wire points then all the fibers are disturbed and there is a sort of a feeling of this milling fabric milling is a finishing process which is applied to the woolen material so we get a similar effect in the brushed fabric now this terminology brushed or the sand wash sanding they are all the same in fact this brushing treatment has become an integral part of this finishing of this uh, knitted fabrics because it is one of the finishing processes which comes under the category of mechanical finishing so brushing is increasingly used for the knitted fabrics in order to get certain effects on that now let us spend a few minutes on the type of stitches although it was mentioned before but there are certain other things which are to be mentioned now a knitted fabric is produced by a loop so this is called knit stitch but there is what is called a tuck stitch the introduction of the tuck stitch in the fabric gives a higher weight and bulk also then there is what is called a mist stitch so a combination of knit tuck and mist stitches are used in the production of fabrics in order to confer certain special characteristics to the knitted fabrics now single jersey jersey is face or plain knitted so it has got a net stitch or the notation that we use is there are two sides one is the technically face side and the other is the technical back side so the face side has got this type of loop this has got the loops on the back side so technical back and technical front it is also mentioned in another way so this is the back side this is the front side front and back now this is represented by a cross and this back side is represented by a circle and that is the reason why a single jersey fabric is not having the same appearance on both the sides it is irreversible so to say and while making the garments this side only is used and this side comes at the back of the garment but when we talk about these double jersey fabrics both the sides are identical so that any portion of the fabric can be used for making a garment that is the advantage and a plain weave in woven fabrics also any side can be used for making a garment but if it is a twill fabric one has to be very careful two up one down means the two up one down should come in the front otherwise the fabric appearance will be impaired so we have talked about the knit tuck miss stitches and there are derivatives of the single jersey which are meant for introducing some fashion garments 
they are called lacastra so single lacastra then double lacastra then popcorn fred perry these are all some of the names of single jersey derivatives now there are knitting machines which provide all these designs called a multi track machine multi feeder machine and there are so many tracks there which give you any type of fabric that is to be knitted now let us talk about the double jersey fabric or double knit as it is called now in the production of the single jersey fabrics only one type of needle is used called cylinder needle in the case of double knit we use two types of needles one is cylinder the other is the dial for example we have got a 1 into 1 rib this is 1 into 1 rib as it can be easily seen there is a combination of the knit stitch in the face and back now this is for the back side and this is for the front side so this is 1 into 1 rib all our knit stitches and 2 into 2 rib this is 2 into 2 rib and we can have 3 into 3 rib also and 4 into 4 into 4 rib likewise just like we have the derivatives of the single jersey we have the derivatives in double jersey and interlock is the combination of two 1 into 1 rib at the combination of two 2 into 2 rib is called eight lock now let us talk about the derivatives of rib these are all meant for introducing certain designs in the fabric one is royal rib the other is called the polka and there is a name that is given to these derivatives of rib cardigan off cardigan and full cardigan so this royal rib is called off cardigan so we use a tuck stitch in this derivatives of the rib and a tuck stitch is meant for increasing the weight of the fabric also and to introduce certain ornamentation in the fabric that is the design in the fabric and there are so many types of double knits which are used in dress materials swiss double pk
French double PK then Ponte di Roma they are all heavier structures which are produced from these double nets and in the case of the interlock fabrics the knitting machine which produces this fabric has got a cylinder needle and a dial needle and the needle sizes are different unlike the rib fabric where all the needles are having the same sizes in the case of interlock one is a long needle the other is a short needle and this is on the cylinder and this is on the dial. So, a long needle is in association with a small one, a shorter one with a longer one like that the needle is arranged in the interlock. And there are two types of gating as we call, one is the rib gating, the other is the interlock gating. So, there are two types of gating, rib and interlock and uh, usually there are two feeders in the interlock, one is one feeder and it is the second feeder. In the first feeder, So, by combining these two or superimposing one over the other, we get interlock. Interlock fabrics are quite heavy and very firm. They have got a higher GS sum that is the gram per square meter which is called the fabric weight and are generally used in outerwear garments that is a t-shirt and uh, sometimes a combination of interlock and single jersey is also used. And all types of yarns, cotton yarns, mainly cotton yarns are used for the production of this web knitted fabrics. Woolen can be used for sweaters, then polyester cotton, and there are some special types of fabrics which are knitted from polyester which are used in the industry. Then terry structures, gloves, to talk about the production of the fabric on a weft knitting machine, the cylinder rotates around 30 rpm. Suppose there is one feeder and one revolution is made, one course is laid. Suppose there are 120 feeders, 120 courses are laid in one revolution of the knitting machine. So, you can imagine the amount of production that we get on a weft knitting machine which is quite high. But one point is that there is what is called a loop length which is nothing but the length of the loop from this portion to this. It is generally about 1, 2.1 of a millimeter or 0.21 centimeter. So, when the loop length increases, the GSM reduces and vice versa. When the loop length decreases, the weight of the fabric goes up. So, by controlling this loop length, many of the properties of the web knitted fabrics can be controlled. For example, shrinkage is quite high in weft knitted fabric which has got a very large loop length, whereas shrinkage is much less in a fabric which has got a shorter loop length. 
So, loop length dictates many of the properties of these knitted fabrics. And to check the quality of a knitted fabric, suppose a bunion made by jockey or from some other manufacturers is obtained, how can we judge the quality of a knitted fabric? Now, the particulars that are required are wales per centimeter, courses per centimeter, stitch density, and GSM, thickness, now there is a relation between the wales per centimeter into loop length in centimeter or millimeter, so that is called KW, similarly the relation between courses into per centimeter into loop length in centimeter give you Kc. Then the product of Kc and Kw is Ks. Usually a knitted fabric after it has been produced is subjected to relaxation treatments in order to see that the configuration of the loop does not change and there are so many ways of relaxing the fabric tumble drying process is used or steeping the fabric in hot water which is kept around 70 degrees centigrade for about uh, 2 hours and a dry relaxation treatment which means that the material is stored in the place where it was knitted for about a week or so. All these processes will result in bringing the fabric to a stable configuration. That means there will not be any change in the wales and courses when they are measured. A knitted fabric is very prone to the variation in wales and courses. As soon as it is knitted, if these parameters are measured and then after storing them for a week, if these parameters are again measured, there will be a big difference. But the point is that we should reach a stage where there is no difference in the wales per centimeter and courses per centimeter and that is called a stable condition. To achieve the stable condition as quickly as possible, the various relaxation treatments are given. And then we have one very famous relaxation treatment called starfish, start as a finish that is the terminology. So, these people have developed a software for determining the shrinkage of a knitted fabric knowing the counts that are being used and without knitting a fabric one can predict the shrinkage that is going to occur in the fabric with the aid of the starfish. So, for a web knitted fabric for example, this should be about 4.7, this is about 5.3 and this is about 22.1. Suppose we get these parameters for a knitted fabrics which has been purchased from outside, it is clear that the fabric has got very good dimensional stability and there is nothing to doubt about the quality. But on the other hand, if the values 3 and 2 and some abnormal values are obtained that means the fabric is not in stable configuration and it will give rise to a lot of problems during its use. Discuss something about this warp knitting process. Now in weft knitting the package of yarn that is used is a cone whereas in warp knitting we use groups of yarn which is produced by a beam. The beam is used for weaving warp and weft, but here the beams are narrow, they do not have so much width as we have seen in the case of the weaving of a, a cotton fabric. So, these beams are kept on the top of the machine, four beams or something like that. The arms are withdrawn from the beam and then they pass through the needle and a sinker. Here the needle is not a single needle as we have mentioned in the case of the weft knitting machine. It is attached to a bar. So, this is called the needle bar. It is something like 
all the shirts are kept in one rod with a hanger. So the needles are arranged in such a manner on this bar. And sinker, we have already seen the use of sinker in weft netting machine which is to aid in the formation of the fabric. A sinker is a small iron a stainless steel piece. So when we talk about a knitted loop, this is a knitted loop, this portion is called the sinker loop. So without sinker also, the knitted fabric can be produced but the appearance of the fabric will be very poor. And in the case of warp knitting, we have a sinker and also a needle. Sinkers are also attached to a bar which is called sinker bar. Now in between the two needles, the sinker goes and the loops are made by two motions of the needle bar. One is the swinging motion, the other is called the shogging motion. Swinging and shogging. So this movement is called shogging, swinging is going round this needle. That is done by a guide bar. So the guide is a carrier which carries the yarn. So the guide does two things, one is swinging and then shogging. Suppose this is a needle. So this one is called the underlap, this is called the overlap and overlaps and underlaps are something like bread and butter of a warp knitted fabric and then we have a open lap, then a closed lap. So when we discuss this warp knitted fabrics, four parameters namely open lap, closed lap, overlap, underlap are very important to understand the structure. And a warp knitting machine or a warp knitting process, process consists of two things, one is tricot, the other is a rushel. Tricot is meant for producing finer fabrics like saris or shirtings or dress materials whereas rushel is meant for making nets which are used in cricket grounds or in football, marquisite net, then talle, And mosquito nets also are produced, upholstery fabrics are produced by Russian technology and uh, medical textile, for example, prosthesis. And in Tricot, there are many types of fabrics which are produced and which are meant for shirtings, for example, tricot fabric as such, then lock knit, then reverse lock knit, shark skin, satin, double atlas or some of the structures which are produced by using tricot and rachel nets, talle, everything. And here in tricot the gauge means the number of needles per inch whereas in rachel number of needles per 2 inch. So, Russian needles are coarser as compared to the tricot needles and we use man-made fibers 
in the production of warp knitted fabrics such as nylon or polyester or acrylic. Though spun yarns also can be used, but it is used, I mean the filament yarns are used normally in the production of warp knitted fabrics. And warp knitted fabrics are having very good dimensional stability, firm and uh, no loop will come out of the fabric. It is so firm which is built inside and uh, these are all some of the attributes of this warp knitted fabric. And gloves can be produced by warp knitting process. The upholstery fabrics Now let us see some of the notations of warp knitted fabric. Now this is depicted as 0, 1 stroke. This is how it is the notation is used. This 1 dash knot because it goes in between 1 and 0 and 1 dash 2 is 1 and 2 it goes. And this is the overlap and this is the underlap. A cross indicates the underlap. The stroke stroke then this uh, hyphen denotes the overlap. In this case it is one dash knot, this is a long underlap as one can see and it goes like this 3 dash 4. So this is the overlap, this is the underlap for this fabric. So the notations are used for representing these warp knitted structures from which one can easily find out the overlap and also the underlap and the type of structure. If one dash knot is there. Suppose there is a fabric, this is a tight fabric, it does not have any slack and then we have fabrics in which the loops are like this. So this is called pillar stitch. There are so many varieties of these warp knitted structures which are produced and which have got good design effects. And we have a satin also here and talking about these tricot fabrics, one thing has to be remembered that is a single bar fabric and a double needle bar fabric. That is there are two bars, one is the back guide bar and front guide bar. So they are shown separately. This is back guide bar, this is the front guide bar. The fabric that is produced with a single guide bar is tricot. So here Now both are combined together here in order to get a unified structure. And there are three guide bar fabrics also, middle guide bar we call it in that case, front, middle and back. The double guide bar that is back guide bar and a front guide bar that is two needle guide bars and also the three one give the firmness to the structure. And warp knitted fabrics are also used in what are called spacer fabrics. A spacer fabric is one which has got three layers, the top, middle and bottom. So the top one is 
the warp knitted fabric and in the middle you have got the filament. This type of fabric is used in a variety of applications as the geotextile or the fabric for the uniform materials. Some tests which have been performed on the spacer fabrics are bullet tests. Fabric is kept and a shot is fired at it and it takes all the resistance. So, that is a application of these warp knitted fabrics in spacer fabrics as well. There is a wide variety of knitted fabrics which are made and used in various applications. Now, we will take up those items. Jersey fabrics are composed entirely of either face loops or back loops and are non reversible. The machines are of one set needles with sinker top arrangement. The machines are in a variety of gauge and diameter producing underwear, outerwear, plain and fancy fabrics. Machines with finer cut up to 28, diameter of 26 to 30 inches, high productive capacity are available. High productive capacity is due to each needle being capable of independent control, allowing many feeders to be placed around the circumference of the machine. Machines having as many as 120 feeders are available. The number of feeds per diametrical inch and the diameter of machine decide the total number of feeders in the machine. Then, derivatives of single jersey. The machines described earlier are single cam track machines with only one type of needles. These machines are capable of producing plain single jersey fabrics. In order to derive various structures from the single jersey machines, certain modifications are to be carried out in the sinker body single jersey machines with respect to their needles and cams. Machines can be equipped with needles having high and low butts with needle selections by swing or split cams at the raising cam places. With such arrangements, the needles can be selected for any two stitches out of the three, knit, tuck and miss. Machines can be equipped with multi-cam tracks at the feeder positions and their respective needle types. Machines with three track, four track, five track cams are available depending upon the needle selection complications for different structures. The needles have three, four or five possible butt positions to get the required stitches and uh, there are also multi-cam track machines. We shall discuss the derivatives of the single jersey fabrics. A single jersey consists of a knitting loop, but there are three types of stitches. One is the knit loop and the tuck loop and the miss stitch. So, by using these tuck and miss stitches along with the knit stitch, a variety of structures can be produced which are called derivatives of single jersey. Now, we shall see some of these uh, derivatives of the single jersey structure. This is Lacosta structure which is a derivative of the single jersey. Now, a dot indicates the tuck stitch, a cross indicates the knit stitch and a blank indicates the miss stitch. So, by judiciously using these knit tuck and miss stitches, we can produce a variety of structures. Now, this is a cross tuck. So, it makes use of a knit stitch and a tuck stitch, knit, tuck tuck, knit, tuck, knit, knit, tuck, knit, tuck. So, this is tuck, this is tuck and this is miss. That is a blank indicates a miss stitch and this indicates a cross, a knit stitch. 
So we have the satin fabric where there are mist stitch and knit stitch, then a combination of knit and tuck stitches in knitted twill fabric. All these fabrics are called single jersey derivatives and uh, they are produced by a combination of knit, tuck and mist stitches. This is the honeycomb structure which is a derivative of single jersey. As it is clear, this makes use of a tuck stitch and a knit stitch. And this is the popcorn which is again a single jersey derivative. It makes use of the knit and tuck stitches. Then this is the jersey blizzard which makes use of the knit and the mist stitches. This is the notation for mist, this is for knit. And here knit, tuck and mist stitches are used in French terry. This is the thick fleece which makes use of all the types of stitches, knit, tuck and mist. And this is the ribbed effect which is obtained by the use of the tuck stitches and also by the mist stitches. So in all the structures, what is the important feature is that the combination of knit, tuck and mist stitches are used in the production of various types of single jersey. This is accomplished by a knitting machine, say Mayer and C, which has got about uh, so many tracks which are capable of producing all these structures. We'll begin with the double jersey structures which are used in the outer garments and also items such as socks, panties, hoses. As it was mentioned, the double jersey structures consists of rib interlock. They are quite different from the single jersey structures which we have discussed already. Now in the rib, in the structure as well as in the machine, there are two types of needles which are used. So also here two types of needles. The horizontal one is called the dial needle and the vertical one is called the cylinder needle. And there are two types of gating. One is rib gating. The other is the interlock gating. Gating is the arrangement of needles. Suppose this is the dial needle and this is the cylinder needle. That means they are arranged alternately. It is called rib gating. This is rib gating, whereas in interlock gating, so one dial needle is exactly above the cylinder needle or the arrangement is such that both are in parallel, whereas here it is alternative. And the rib structure we have already seen. Here it is in the anti-clockwise direction, then clockwise direction, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Anti so this is called one into one rib. This is the stitch notation that is used for the fabric C 
see this one is the clockwise direction and the other day we pointed out that this is in the anti clockwise direction therefore this is technical back so this is this notation that is a circle and this is in the clockwise direction therefore this is technical front side so, clockwise direction this is the front side, this is the back side and interlock is nothing but a combination of two one into one rib. is called interlock, but in the interlock machine we have needles which are having a longer length and a shorter length. So, a longer length is in contact with a shorter one and a shorter one with a longer one. So, this is the type of needle arrangement that we have in the interlock machine, whereas in the rig machines all the needles are of the same length. Now, we will see some rib knitted structures which are produced by knit, tuck and miss stitches. We already seen some derivatives of the one into one rib namely the off cardigan and full cardigan and derivatives of the interlock namely eight lock structure. This is the one into one rib structure and by introducing the tuck stitch here as well as here we get off cardigan structure. And by introducing a miss, a tuck stitch here, we get a full cardigan. So, this is occupied by a knit stitch and here there is one tuck stitch, here alternating. Here this is a normal one into one rib. Then talking about interlock, there are two feeders. The D stands for dial, C stands for cylinder. So, first feeder, this is the second feeder. So, this is a one into one rib. Now, by combining these two, we get this interlock structure. Now, interlock structures can be constructed in many ways. There is what is called a two So, by combining this two, 2 into 2 rib, 2, 2 into 2 rib, we get 8 lock. This of this interlock fabrics, we have mentioned that there is an 8 lock fabric and by a combination of knit, tuck and miss stitches, we 
a wide variety of double jersey structures can be produced. And another advantage in a double jersey structure is that cylinder we can use one type of yarn for example, filament yarn and in the dial we can use a spun yarn or it may be of a different type may be polypropylene and cotton or polyester and cotton. So, we can make a double knit fabric using these two types of yarns and also by using these rib or interlock machines which is not possible in the case of a single jersey machine. Now, there are a few things to remember in double jersey structures. One is the needle layout. And knit, knitting cycle. The needle layout can be rib gear gating or interlock gating. I will just demonstrate to you, I will just demonstrate it to you the rib gating and interlock gating. Suppose these are the cylinder needles, these are the rib needles this is interlock gating, this is rib gating. In between the two dial needles there is a cylinder needle. So, that is the rib gating. It's the Milano rib which is produced by using a different layout. There are three feeders F1, F2, F3. As you see in feeder 1 all the dial and cylinder needles are knitting. In the feeder 2, it is only the dial needle, D stands for dial, which do this knitting action. And in feeder 3, it is only the cylinder needles which do this knitting action. Now, all the three are combined together to form a structure which is called a Milano rib. This Milano rib is used in many outerwear garments and if colored threads are used, it has got a very good appearance. Hmm. This is called a French PK, which is a rib gated structure. Now, this is dial, this is cylinder, dial, cylinder, dial, cylinder, dial, cylinder. As you see here, there is a difference in the knitting cycle. So, this is skipped here and uh, the knitting is done. Here, it is skipped here the alternative one and this one also is skipped here and so that is how you get a structure called French PK. It is called the Swiss PK and there is a dial and a cylinder, dial, cylinder. So, there are four feeders here and the layout is rib. And here on both dial and cylinder needles knitting action takes place. Whereas, here it is only in dial the knitting takes place and in the third feeder again both the dial and cylinder needles do this knitting action and in the fourth feeder it is the dial needles which do this knitting action. We are going to now consider PK poplin. It is a 6 feed structure with knit and float stitch combination. At feeds 2, 3, 5 and 6 there is no knitting with cylinder needles. So, that is the peculiar feature of this fabric. Now, let us see the structure of this PK pattern.
So, there are 6 feeders So, feeder 1, this is the dial needle, this is the cylinder needle. So, knitting takes place only in the cylinder needle here. So, in the last feeder F6, it is only on the needles that is on the dial the knitting takes place. Here both the dial and the cylinder, here it is only on the cylinder. This is the dial, this is the dial. Now all are combined together to get a structure. So, this structure is possible only when there are 6 feet.
This fabric makes use of seven feeders and uh, in the dial and cylinder we have the long and the short needles and in the first feeder there is a tuck stitch also in the second feeder but in the other third fourth there are only knit stitches again in F5 you have got a knit stitch this is F6 feeder 6 and feeder 7. So, in feeder 7 all the cylinder needles are putting the stitches whereas in the feeder 7 the dial needles are putting the stitches. F8. In F8, it is all the dial needles which put the stitches. This is pronounced as Ponte di Roma. So, we have four feeders. And we are going to consider a interlock gating in this structure. This is to show that the dial needle has a longer length and that cylinder needle has got a shorter length. So, this is shorter, this is longer, this is longer, this is shorter. So, it alternates. This is longer, this is shorter, this is longer, this is shorter. So, in the first feeder, the knitting takes place on alternating needles and in the second feeder, it is taking place alternately. In the F3 feeder, the knitting takes place only on the dial needle. And in the fourth feeder, the knitting takes place on all the cylinder needles. So, this structure is called Ponte di Roma, which is a very interesting structure and which is used for shirting. Talking about these interlock fabrics, it should be remembered that there are two feeders which are essentially required. One feeder but although we put a dot here, it means that this is a long needle and this is a short needle. Then this is the short needle and this is the long needle alternating. So, this is the first feeder and in the second feeder, so, 
So short, long, short, long, short. So here first knitting takes place on all the long needles. And in the second feeder, it is on the short needle, on all the short needles the knitting takes place. So this is something interesting to note that in the first feeder it is a long needle, in the second feeder it is a short needle. And we also have what are called garment making machines. Garment knitting machines or making machines. And the gauge of this uh, interlock is about 18, that is 18 needles per inch. There are so many structures which are possible in the interlock gated structures. We have discussed this Ponte di Roma and we shall discuss some two or three more structures to complete our discussion. Common rib, this type of fabric is obtained with knit and tuck as well as knit and float combination. Float means misstitch. They have ripple like appearance on the face side. Tucking takes place for four successive feeds in an eight feed cycle. The tucking effect bunches and pushes the fabric upwards to form a row like appearance. So in all there are 8 feeders and it is interlock gating as you will see here. So this is F1 that is feeder 1 where all the long needles are used for knitting. And in F2 It is the short needle which does the knitting. So we have the tuck stitch here. Feed 5, feed 6, Feed seven. Then feed eight. So this is the Ottoman rib. There is something interesting in this, although it is called rib, it makes use of the interlock gating. The next structure that we are going to discuss is burlet. This also makes use of the interlock gating. Feeder 1, this is the dial needle, 
a longer one, a shorter one, a shorter one, a longer one. So instead of putting every time a short needle followed by a long needle, we just put a dot which is understandable in the case of the interlock structure. That means this is the long needle, this is a short needle. So every time there is no need to put these strokes. In the second feeder, So this is the burlet. <laughs> this structure has the repeat on six feeders. Feeders 1 and 4 produce regular interlock, whereas feeders 2, 3, 5, 6 produce tuck interlock, as we will see here.
So far, we have seen some single jersey, derivatives of single jersey, double jersey and also derivatives of double jersey fabrics. Particularly, we have discussed the rib gated and also the interlock gated structures which are used in most of these garments. Now, let us discuss some aspects about the knitted fabric geometry. A knitted fabric is made from a single yarn and the term weft knitting is used because the yarn goes something like a weft and in warp knitting we will be considering a bunches of yarn which are passed through the needles. Now a knitted fabric consists of two things. One is a veil, the other is a coarse. But it is only from the coarse a yarn can be withdrawn and we can count the number of courses per centimeter. Whereas in the case of veil, it is a question of measuring the number. And how do we measure these veils and courses in a knitted fabric? That is what we are going to discuss. Now it is easy to put a two marks in a knitted fabric. Suppose this is a veil way, this is a coarse way, which are about one centimeter apart. And then to pull it so that these marks will remain intact and the number of columns can be easily counted. Each veil looks like a railway line and the fabric is turned back and the number of courses are counted either by a counting glass or by marking 1 centimeter the number of courses also can be easily counted. So the number of veils and courses in a fabric are very important and usually the number of courses are 17 while the number of veils are 14 per centimeter. So that the ratio of the courses per centimeter to veils per centimeter is approximately 1.3. This is called the loop shape factor. Usually the number of courses are more compared to the number of veils and the ratio is 1.3. And we have what are called KC, KW and KS which are called dimensional constants. And the knitted fabric is generally tested for GSM, gram per square meter. This means that we take 1 meter length and 1 meter height, width is 1 meter, length is 1 meter and after taking this dimension, we weigh the fabric and find out what it is. In the case of single jersey, it is usually about 95. In the case of double jersey, it goes up to 200, which is a heavier fabric. And we can calculate this weight that is GSM using the geometrical parameters of a knitted fabric. For example, GSM is given by stitch density which is the product of the veils and the courses. For example, if 14 is the number of veils per centimeter, 17 is the number of courses per centimeter, 17 into 14. gives the stitch density. It is represented in centimeter squared. We take the loop length and also the tex of the yarn, divide that by 10. T is the tex of the yarn. Tex means it is a linear density. That is the number of grams in a kilometer is called tex. That is number of grams in 1000 meters. And 
the higher the value of t, you can see that GSM is higher. And also when stitch density increases, GSM is higher. When the loop length increases, GSM is higher. And there is a good relationship between the GSM calculated by using this formula and also the experimental value. Usually there is a cutter for cutting a knitted fabric and then it is weighed in a circular fashion. It is usually available and used in many of the knitting industries to find out the GSM. And GSM has got a very good relation to the shrinkage. Usually when we make a loosely produced knitted fabric, shrinkage is higher and vice versa. And loop length is a very important parameter which controls the dimensional stability of the knitted fabric. A lot of studies have been done to find out the loop length. Let us see how the loop length is calculated. The loop length is the distance from this place to this place. Suppose it is stretched, this is the length of the loop. But how do we find out for a knitted fabric? That is what I am going to tell you. Now a knitted fabric is taken and then two marks are made which are 100 bales apart. That means if 14 whales occupy 1 centimeter, 100 whales occupy roughly about 7.1 centimeters. So 7.1 centimeter is marked in a fabric and this yarn is pulled out with something extra here and something extra here. So this yarn with two marks is clamped and a load of 10 grams is applied. Now when a load of 10 grams is applied, this yarn which has got the crimp and all that will extend. This extended length is measured. So loop length is given by in centimeter, extended length divided by 100 or if one full course is withdrawn from the fabric, taking into account the total number of needles in a knitting machine, the loop length again can be calculated. But this is the method which is quite simple and which has been recommended by International Institute of Cotton, IAIC. And to control the loop length, we have got certain devices in the knitting machine which are most modern. They are called positive feed systems. The positive feed systems ensure that the loop length in the fabric is kept constant so that the dimensional properties can be easily predicted and there won't be any variation in that. In fact, these positive feed devices have become an integral part of this high speed knitting machines which have got about 120 feeders. And, uh, the measurement of loop length enables you to calculate the GSM. We have already mentioned a formula that is GSM is obtained by taking stitch density in centimeter squared into tex into loop length in centimeter divided by 10. Now another way of calculating the loop length is having obtained the GSM by the cutter and if T is known and stitch density parameters are known then L can be easily calculated. In fact L which is calculated by using this formula is found to be far more accurate than what we measure or both comparisons can be made. The loop length measured by this International Institute of Cotton and loop length which is obtained by using this formula. Let us work out one case that is 
17 courses into 14 wheels, 238 multiplied by tex, let us say tex is 20 and loop length is 0.2 of a centimeter divided by 10. This gives 95, which is more or less the same. And loop length is measured, then shrinkage is measured. Now, shrinkage by taking a known length of a knitted fabric and marking the dimensions both in the width way as well as in the length way, then it is put in a washing machine. Then after that the fabric is taken out and then dried and the marks that were put in the fabric before laundering are monitored and then the shrinkage percentage is calculated. If the shrinkage is calculated for the whole uh, rectangle let us say what we get is called the area shrinkage. And there are some defects which are noticed in the weft knitted fabric, particularly spirality. What is spirality? If the veils and courses not positioned at 90 degrees, we get this defect. In a normal fabric, the veil is at 90 degrees to the course, this is the veil, this is the course. Suppose in a fabric there is a slight inclination, this is called spirality, this is the angle of spirality. Spirality is a defect which makes rejection in the garments when the knitted fabrics having the spirality problem are used for garment manufacture. So, a lot of steps have been taken to prevent the spirality use of alternate twist in the yarn. One yarn will have Z twist, the other yarn will have S twist. This is Z twisted yarn, where the middle stroke of Z corresponds with this stroke in the yarn. S is, this is the S direction, the middle stroke of S corresponds with the stroke in the yarn. So, by alternating the use of these yarns S, Z, S, Z or 2 S, and 2 z that means s s z z or 3 z z z s s s the spirality can be overcome by having all these combinations and another reason is the yarn structure which is contributing to the spirality the rotor spun yarns have less irregular spirality compared to the ring spun yarns and twist affects the spirality and also the direction of motion of the cylinder and a lot of studies have been made on spirality to find out the causes for this and then how to overcome these problems. One very interesting work that has been done in arresting the spirality is first producing a yarn on the ring frame and then this yarn is taken up in the doubler where some twist is removed. So that if this contains T, T minus something is there in the yarn after removal of say 10 percent of the twist and if this yarn is used for knitting it has been found that the incidence of spirality has come down quite significantly. So this is another way of arresting spirality is to do some wet processing of the yarn like mercerization or enzymatic treatment or uh, scouring and all that which have all led to a reduction in the spirality. So, and use of two fold yarns has been found to result in a much better improvement in spirality. So, spirality is one of the causes and holes in the fabric which are due to the whole poor yarn and uh, needle condition also is bad. Then the stitches not coming properly again due to the condition of the needles and all. So, 
the knitted fabrics after they have been produced or inspected in a machine, inspect, inspecting machine and then the faults that are present are recorded. And uh, another thing that should be mentioned about the knitted fabric is the relaxation treatments which are applied on to them. Unlike a woven fabric, a knitted fabric does not maintain the stable configuration. That means the number of valences and courses are not the same. After storage for a week, there is a variation in the number of courses and veils. In order to have a constant number of veils and courses, the fabrics are subjected to three types of relaxation. One is dry relaxation. Wet relaxation. and full relaxation. Tumble drying is a process that is given to arrest this to bring the fabric to a stable configuration and it has become an integral part of the processing sequence in wet processing and uh, dry relaxation means storing the fabric in the place where it was noted for a period of a week or 10 days during which time there will be a stability in the number of veils and courses. The fabrics come to a stable configuration or if you want to accomplish this very quickly, the fabrics are put in hot water maintained at a temperature of 80 degrees centigrade for about 2 hours which process will result in the wet relaxation. And many studies were made in order to find out the conditions which are required for getting a full, fully relaxed fabric. And that resulted in a software called Starfish. Starfish is a software which is produced by International Institute of Cotton for predicting the shrinkage even without knitting the fabric. If the yarn parameters are known and also the machine parameters are known, then it will be possible to predict the shrinkage of the fabric which is going to be knitted making use of this software. This software has been found to be very useful and also the software also gives us the procedure for achi achieving a fully st stable fabric. So a lot of developments have taken place in the knitting area in order to make fabrics which are more uniform, which are more uh, stable and they will not shrink later on. Spend some time on these warp knitted structures. There are two types of warp knitted structures. One is tricot, the other is called rushel. So, Russian tricot is meant for fine fabrics and Russian is meant for coarse fabrics. And in warp knitting, there are two type of stitches. This is called open stitch. This is called the closed stitch. And another thing is overlap and underlap. Open loop and closed stitch, open stitch and closed stitch. Now, each dot represents a needle and this is the moment of the guide bar. This is the swinging moment, this is the shogging moment. So this is the swinging moment. So this is the swinging moment. This is a shogging moment. It is by the combination of swinging and shogging movements that we get a lap 
or a loop in a warp knitted fabric. Now, the same thing is represented in this way. Suppose this is written as 0, 1, 2, 3, that is a needle spacing. This is one needle spacing, this is 0, this is 2. So, the needle bar goes in between the two needles. So, this is a overlap and this is an underlap. Now, the same thing is depicted. This is one dash naught because it goes in this 0 and this is 2 dash 3, 2. So, this stroke is called an underlap. this bar is called a overlap. There are so many types of stitches. This is called a chain stitch or a pillar stitch. And we have a tricot which is produced by using open laps. So, this is also 0 dash 1, these are called lapping movements. Zero dash one and one dash two dash one and double stroke. Now let us see the lapping notation of some fabrics. In case a warp knitted fabric is made from a single guide bar, it does not have much stability. So, two guide bars are used. One is called the back guide bar, the other is the front guide bar. It is also represented as B, G, B and F, G. B. And we have got another type of stitch called inlay stitch. This is called the inlay stitch. And if we have a pillar stitch, So, 0 dash 1, 1 dash 0, that is the lapping notation for this stitch. And there is what is called a blind stitch also.
So, this is 1 dash naught and 3 dash 4. because it passes between 3 and 4. These are the needles. So, we get what is called a longer lapping <coughs> because the length is more it is called longer lapping. So, 1 dash naught, this is 4 dash 5. All these are illustrated to show the long underlap. This is the short overlap, underlap. This is the short one. But if it is taken like this, you get a longer lapping. Then there is what is called an atlas stitch, which is quite interesting.
So there are two types of atlas. One is open, the other is closed. So this is one dash not one dash two two dash two
Warp knitted fabrics can be made from a single guide bar or from two guide bars. Fabrics which are made from two guide bars have got good stability and we shall see some warp knitted structures using these two guide bars. The first is full tricot. So, we have shown the lapping movements separately for front guide bar and for the back guide bar. So, the lapping notation for front guide bar one dash not one dash two. And back guide bar lapping notation is 1 dash 2, 1 dash not, 1 dash not, 1 dash 2. And for the back one is 1 dash, 1 dash not and 1 dash 2. Now, these are amalgamated. For example, That is how we get the overall fabric there. Now, lock knit is a structure which is generally produced
So front guide bar 1 dash naught, this is the front guide bar, this is the back guide bar. So for front guide bar, the lapping moments are 1 dash naught, 2 dash 3 and back guide bar 1 dash 2, 1 dash naught. 1 dash 2, 1 dash naught. So, these are combined together to have a structure. Now, let us pass on to the satin structure. We have already seen the characteristics of the satin structure in woven fabric and here you will see that there is a long float which provides that uh, effect in warp knitted fabric. In fact, satin weaves are characterized by the long floats and they are eminently suitable as a slumber fabric or a bed fabric. So, warp knitted fabrics which are produced with this satin construction are also used as slumber fabric. So, this is the satin structure front guide bar and back guide bar. You have a longer float, float in front guide bar as against this back guide bar. So, the chain notation or the lapping notation for the front guide bar is 3 dash 4 stroke 1 dash knot and for the back guide bar it is 1 dash not 1 dash 2. We can have a variation instead of 3 dash 4, 4 dash 5 also.
So for the front guide bar, the lapping notations for reverse lock light are 1 dash not stroke 1 dash 0 and back guide bar 1 dash not stroke 2 dash 0. Now reverse lock light is nothing but a regular lock light as whatever that we have for the back guide bar is shifted to front guide bar. So that is the detail of this uh, reverse lock light. Shark skin, it is a reverse version of the satin with longer underlaps of back bar and shorter underlaps of front bar. The longer underlaps of back bar are trapped by the front bar which restricts the shrink ability of the fabric, the shrinkability of the fabric. As the name implies, the surface of the technical back is rough. The fabric is very rigid and maximum shear resistance is available. It is a shirting fabric having less luster than other warp knit fabrics. Now let us see the lapping notation of this shark skin. Lapping notation for the front guide bar is 1 dash naught and 1 dash 2. So 1 dash not on 1 dash 2 and for the front guide bar Four dash five and one dash zero are the lapping moments for the back guide bar. Talking about the two bar structures in warp knitting, and another structure which we are going to take up today is this quince cord. It also makes use of two guide bars as we will see now.
So, this is the front guide bar chain notation and this one is for the back guide bar. Now, here the chain notation is 1 dash naught 3 dash 4 and repeating and here it is 0 dash 1 and 1 dash 0. It is a chain stitch as you see. So, this fabric is less extensible with less shrinkage on finishing and this is the pillar stitch so called. This is the pillar stitch and it is a very popular shirting fabric. By threading colored yarns with front guide bar, a pin stripe effect is produced. Then we have pile fabrics also in warp knitting. So, we shall see one example of this pile fabrics.
So, the notation for file fabrics is shown and uh, I will just give you these uh, chain notations. The back guide bar 1 dash not 1 dash 2, 1 dash not 1 dash 2 and the front guide bar 1 dash not 4 dash 5, 1 dash not 4 dash 5 and the front guide bar another version here the front guide bar is 1 dash not and 1 dash 2. So, this is the structure of the pile fabric. In fact, warp knitting is also capable of producing these uh, pile fabrics or terry fabrics and uh, here there are two versions. One is the front guide bar, two front guide bar and one back guide bar. This is the correct version of this pile fabric and uh, you find the chain notations for the front guide bar, back guide bar, front guide bar and back guide bar separately for this fabric. And in weft knitting, the types of fabrics that are produced are t-shirts, brushed sweater jersey. Brushing means rubbing the fabric by using a roller covered with wire points and this brushing provides the fabric certain other characteristics which it does not possess before brushing. For example, better absorption, good drape, good feel, handle etc. In fact, most of these uh, double jersey fabrics are brushed and we also produced a a fabric which has got this lace effect in uh, single jersey socks are made and uh, fleece fabrics are made in the case of weft knitting. A fleece fabric is one which is constructed from two types of yarns. One is a coarser yarn say 10s open end yarn and 30s ring spun yarn and these two yarns are used so that a fleece fabric is made. There are three thread fleece which I am going to tell you later and uh, this fleece fabrics have become very popular in t-shirts and after making the fabric, if the fabrics are brushed, then their appearance enhance, is enhanced and uh, denim fabrics also can be made using this uh, weft knitting technology and uh, jacquard jersey and uh, the sweater jersey can be made, blouses can be produced using this weft knitting machine which are used for protecting the hands while cutting something or working on a machine. So, even warp knitting technology can be used for making these blouses which are used in the industry particularly in the chemical industries where there is the uh, question of touching these uh, acids or alkalis of a very high concentration at all. Now, there is a type which is called tissue jersey which is used in lingerie items that is the undergarments for women. The fiber content that is used is rayon which is a spun yarn and it is used in lingerie and tops and this is a old term sometimes used for cambric but now refers to women's undergarments that is lingerie. Then the next item is t-shirt jersey. This is used in t-shirts and bedding and rayon or polyester or spandex is used in the fabric. It is a spun yarn and brushed sweater jersey. 
here the fiber content is acrylic and the yarn is a spun yarn. The finishes that are given are napped finishes. It is used in sweaters and cardigans. And as far as the characteristics of this fabric are concerned, it is a bulkier jersey which is called a sweater jersey to assist the buyer in understanding the type and weight of the jersey being offered. Brushing means rubbing the fabric with a wire point in order to lift all the fibers from the surface so as to give a messy appearance to that. And slub jersey is made out of rayon both in spun as well as in slub form and it is used as tops and dresses. Slub jersey is used extensively in the juniors marketplace. The texture on the surface of the fabric due to the deliberately irregular yarns is quite evident in this fabric. Then it is the fiber content is 95 percent polyester and 5 percent spandex. Spandex is lycra which has got an extension of 600 percent and the yarn construction is a microdenier filament. Now microdenier means any fiber which has got a denier less than 0.5 is called a microdenier. It is used in junior tops and dress materials and as far as its characteristics are concerned, it is intertwist textured yarn and a lightweight jersey that is made of a microdenier crepe twisted polyester yarn. This fabric is made with alternating rows of a S and Z twisted yarns which give the fabric a mildly, mildly sandpapery hand and wonderful drape. This opaque fabric is prevalent in the juniors market and is made of polyester. Next item is the poly span which is made out of polyester and spandex and it is a filament yarn. It is used in contemporary tops and dresses. The characteristics of this fabric are it is a fine gauge jersey with a soft and smooth hand. Usually printed this fabric has four way stretch and is used in clingy garments. The next item is denim jersey. It is made out of cotton and polyester and spandex fibers. The yarn used is a spun yarn and it is used in jiggings, tops and sweats. The characteristics or denim jersey is a knit industry's answer to coordinates for the denim industry. Fabric is not denim as it is not a twill denim. It is used here as an adjective describing and differentiating the type of jersey. This fabric is made with blue and white yarns using mist stitches that successfully imitate the twill structure due to floats on the back. The white threads are cotton and the blue ones are polyester. Fair Isle Jacquard Jersey. The fiber content is polyester and the yarn that is used is of spun type. It is used in sweaters and tops. The characteristics of this fabric are Fair Isle uses mist stitches to create color patterning which is evidenced by the floats on the back of the fabric. This fabric is often used for heavier gauge sweaters but can be found in linear in finer gauge jacquard knits like this one. These floats often impedes elasticity and increases the weight of the fabric. We have already discussed about this one into one rib knit 
and uh, in this rib knit polyester and cotton blended yarn is used which is a spun one. It is used for t-shirts, tanks, pyjamas, cuffs and waistbands and 2 into 2 rib knit is made out of rayon and spandex blended yarn which is a spun one and it is used in t-shirts, tanks and pyjamas. Then 1 into 1 and 2 into 2 rib knit characteristics and differences. Rib knits are created with a combination of knit and pearl stitches evident on the surface of this fabric. A 1 into 1 rib is created by knitting one stitch and one, then purling one stitch and is notated as KIPI. This is accomplished on a double needle bed machine as two sets of needles are required. Gently pull the fabric apart horizontally and the courses in between the veils can be seen. 2 into 2 rib net is made by knitting 2 stitches followed by purling 2 stitches and is identified by the 2 verses visible in each rib. So this is the knit stitch, this is the purl stitch. Now in the case of a rib fabric, it was pointed out that suppose this is reversed. So this is 1 into 1 rib, this is 1 into 1 pearl. This 2 into 2 rib was already discussed. So it contains the 2 stitches followed by purling 2 stitches. The advantages of rib knit over a jersey that is a single jersey or that rib knits do not curl at the edges are much more stable and have the greatest elasticity recovery in the horizontal direction. This means that rib knits keep their overall shape better. Think they are often present at the waist, cuff or neckline. Ribs are used to create a snug fit so that the garment stays tight in those areas, retaining warmth and wearability. Now the 2 into 2 rib knit has better horizontal holding power than a 1 into 1 rib knit. Size is not the only difference. However, a 1 into 1 rib knit could actually be larger than a 2 into 2. A 6 gauge 1 into 1 rib knit, 6 stitches per inch is going to be much larger than a 22 gauge 2 into 2 rib knit for example. Then the other type of double jersey fabric is PK knit. The fiber content is cotton which is a spun yarn and it is used in polo shirts, tops and dresses. As far as its characteristics are concerned, PK uses <coughs> tuck stitches to create a three dimensional quality to the fabric. This is a fabric appropriated from the woven market for its absorbent and resilient qualities. PK is used extensively in the polo shirt market. 
although this fabric is made on a jersey body it is often made as a rib knit or double knit then thermal knit it is made out of cotton and it is a spun yarn the application of this fabric is pyjamas thermal underwear and its characteristics are it is very absorbent and it can retain body heat and is often chosen for thermal underwear and shirts so the rib knits we have a 1 into 1 rib 2 into 2 rib knit about which i spoke then pk fabrics then pointel pointel has got a very complicated design and it creates an open work design when it is completed it is used in a lot of garments to add texture in addition to making them more lightweight and creating a varied look a pointel garment also tends to be cooler than a solid knit making it more suitable for warm climates it is often used as an accent on a garment to provide a block of different texture in addition an entire garment can be made with this stitch as is often the case with undershirts that are designed to be simple and comfortable with a dash of style technically any open work pattern is pointel one of the most classic designs used chevrons but these knits can use any number of geometric shapes or a combination the more complex the design the more challenging it is to knit complex pointel can also look quite stunning once knitters have mastered the art of it a pattern may integrate floral themes such as ferns or palm leaves in combination with other design elements many commercially produced knits have pointel patterns that are produced on knitting machines knitting machines are superb at producing complex standardized patterns although the garments that they produce lack the flavor of hand knit work knitting machines are also capable of creating very small work such as the jersey knit used to make many t-shirts and undergarments a casual glance at pointel leads many people to believe it is very difficult in fact it is fairly easy to make as long as the knitter is able to follow a pattern closely and keep track of stitches dropping a single stitch or missing a section of the pattern will spoil the garment for this reason many knitters work on their projects in calm environments with the assistance of a stitch counter to help them keep track of what they are to knit in pointel knitters need to know two basic stitches knit and purl they will also need to know how to perform a yarn over and a skip all of these knitting procedures are very simple but it does help to have an experienced knitter show a beginner how to do them he or she may also want to start with a very basic pattern to become acquainted with the concept before moving on to complex garments and patterns a scarf with pointel accents is a great way to start pointel is the most decorative of the rib variations this fabric generally has lacy patterns in the shape of hearts stars or the like and is often found in pastel colors although this one is made on a jersey body it is often found on a one into one rib knit and terms such as pk knit thermal knit and pointel refer to the same fabric which is a rib one using tuck stitches to create a three dimensional design all three are made of the cotton fiber family although they are often blended with polyester there is a fabric which is called slinky some details of the slinky fabrics are going to be presented by me now slinky fabric has taken the sewing world by storm this fabric is uncomplicated easy care and great for travel plus a well made slinky garment is beautifully slimming to wear slinky is a finer one into one rib knit often used in the messy market owing to the large amount of spandex in this fabric that is the lycra or the fi fi fiber which has got a very high stretch it has a lot of swing and movement along with excellent recovery this contemporary fabric is named by the trade not history as such it does not have an original fiber family and is always made of man made fibers 
acetate, nylon, rayon or polyester. Fabric can be extremely drapery, forgiving and flattering. Slinky is washable on gentle cycle. Slinky is breathable and feels great. Slinky is great for any figure type. It looks fantastic as long as it is not a overly tight. If it just skims the body, it will hide a multitude of figure flaws. Fit the garment before finishing and make any adjustments. We will take up the fabric which is called onion skin. This onion skin is similar to a lightweight one into one rib knit fabrics and it is made out of polyester which is a filament yarn containing various levels of twist and it is used in juniors, tops and loungery items. The characteristics of this fabric are it is a rib fabric made with either thick and thin or high and low twist yarns importing a textured appearance and dry hand. This fabric shows up in a number of lighter weights in the junior and loungery markets. There are a lot of similarities between slinky and onion skin in the sense that both are made lightweight one into one rib knit fabrics that provide a lot of drape and movement to a garment. The next item that we are going to speak is matty jersey. It is made out of polyester and uh, with different, uh, I mean, over twisted filament and it is used as evening wear dresses and tops. The characteristics of the fabric are it is made with a crepe twist or tex textured filament yarn in a one into one rib or interlock. Matty jersey is not a jersey. The yarn structure gives the fabric a matty surface, incredible drape and elasticity. This fabric appears in more formal markets because of its drape and overall performance. Some explanation is required for the term textured filament yarn. We covered something about these yarns which are carded yarns, combed yarns, blended yarns and uh, filament yarns. A filament when it is used for a fabric produces a fabric which has got a little clammy appearance. That means it is not providing comfort. But when it is texturized, namely when crimps are generated in the yarn or bulk is imparted to the yarn, then the fabric that is made out of this yarn will acquire very good handle. Processes such as crimping or bulking are called texturing processes. Texturing processes can be done by a variety of the methods by air jet texturing, water jet texturing, knit, de-knit technique. Some explanation is required for this textured yarn. A filament yarn is produced as a continuous length by various methods such as uh, wet spinning or dry spinning. See the man-made filaments are produced from a polymer and various spinning methods are used, dry spinning, wet spinning, melt spinning, viscose is produced by wet spinning. This Filament yarns are produced by a spinneret which has got holes and the continuous length of the yarns are come from the spinnerets, something like a vermicelli. And melt spinning is a technique which is used for making nylon, then polyester and acrylic polypropylene. even glass filament, but it is not produced by melt spinning. And when these filament yarns are used, for example, 150 denier or 120 denier or 75 denier, 
Usually 75 denier and below are used in saris and 120 denier is used for making a shirting. So, the yarn that is used is a flat one, but when a crimp is imparted to the yarn that is this waviness, this is called a crimp yarn. And when the yarn acquires bulkiness, whenever a yarn is wetted, the bulkiness appear, appears and the bulkiness also can be produced by various methods. For example, in the case of the acrylic yarn, just by passing steam at the yarn, this bulkiness can be imparted. And when we use these bulk yarns and the crimp yarns for the production of fabric as against this flat yarn, the handle of the fabrics improves a lot. And texturing is a process which is required for importing this crimp or bulk to the yarn by a number of methods. The methods that are used are Draw texturing. Then air texturing. Knit denit technique. Then solvent texturing, in all the cases the input yarn is a flat one and if this is the texturizing process, what comes out is a bulk yarn or a crimped yarn. So, when a yarn is twisted and then heat set and then untwisted, then it gives rise to the formation of this crimp in the yarn that is the basic of this draw texturing. And the feeder yarn sometimes are POY which are called partially oriented yarns compared to the undrawn yarns or the fully drawn yarns. And textured yarns are used in a variety of applications such as saris, then suitings, dress materials, shirts and dhotis. When textured yarns are used in the place of the flat yarns, the fabrics acquire bulk, a very good handle, absorbency, comfort, etc. So, this is the concept of this textured yarn. Sheer matty jersey. This is a fabric which is used in lightweight junior and contemporary tops. It is made on an interlock rib or jersey body. The yarn is 100 percent polyester which is over twisted and uh, it finds application in tops, tanks and blouses. The next item is cable knit variation. This is a fabric which is produced from spun yarn and uh, it is used in sweaters and scarves. Cable knit is a variation of a sweater weight rib knit. The cable pattern is used for texture, surface interest and design. The pattern is a twisted or plated cable design that is evident on one side only. A true cable knit runs on the vertical direction. This fabric is a variation on a cable theme. The original fiber family is wool, but many synthetic and man-made fibers are used today. Now we will pass on to this pearl knit fabric. Like a rib knit fabric, pearl knits appear the same on the face and back of the fabric instead of instead of veils, courses are visible on both sides. The fabric is named for the pearl knit stitch 
which has courses on the front, but in this case it is difficult if not impossible to distinguish the technical face from the back. This fabric is made by making one row of net stitches followed by one row of purl stitches continuing in this pattern for the entire fabric. Purl knits are the slowest to produce and therefore are the most costly of the three basic knit fabrics. This fabric is used for the textured surface provided by its courses and for its stability. The alternating rows of stitches in purl knitting give it the greatest elasticity in the warp or length direction. Purl knits do not curl or quite stable and are better insulators than most knits. When simple texture is required an inside out jersey will work but curling will result. Pearl knit fabric is superior in terms of performance and insulation. The knit industry often calls this construction links because it is made on a links machine. This fabric is produced from polyester which is a spun yarn and it finds application in sweaters, gloves and scarves. Now we will take up the speciality weft knits interlock. We have already mentioned about the interlock which is a combination of two one into one rib fabric. It is made on a double needle bed machine consisting of cylinder and dial. The veils are perfectly lined up behind veils, knit, rib knits have veils line up behind courses. Interlock is often finer than a rib knit. It is a very stable knit with low shrinkage and great stability. Runs can be a problem. It is made out of rayon and it, is, it finds application in sportswear and dresses. Cotton interlock. As the name itself indicates, it is produced from 100 percent cotton which is a spun yarn. It finds application in sportswear and in t-shirts. Then silk jersey. This is made out of silk which is a filament yarn and silk jersey has a particularly drapey aesthetic. The fabric here is a printed interlock. Yet the industry often calls this fabric silk jersey. A printed silk interlock is used in many applications and it, it is used in dresses and blouses. Uh, today we shall discuss some double knit structures. Double knit is a general terminology that is applicable for the fabrics produced with two sets of needles namely the cylinder needles and dial needles in circular knitting machines. The following characteristics such as knitting on two types of needles namely long and short producing on machines of 16 cut or finer incorporating tuck or float stitches in addition to knit stitches are applicable to double knit structures. Fabrics are more suitable for women's outerwear rather than men's suitings due to their crease resistant and poor crease retention. These fabrics are generally knitted on 30 inch diameter machines with rib interlock gating. The machine gauge ranges from 18 to 28. The double knit designs can be produced from non jacquard and jacquard machines. In addition to the stitch combination, artistic designs can be obtained with color combinations. The machines are also referred to as eight system machines. They are gated for either rib or interlock. Transition from rib to interlock or vice versa is made by displacing the dial of a trick spacing with respect to the cylinder with the help of adjusting screws. The cams of dial and cylinder have raising cams which may have any of the three positions namely knit, tuck and miss. The raising cams may be either pivoting or bolt cam type. 
both the stitch cams on the cylinder may be fixed together and the likewise the stitch cams on the dial. Some popular double knit structures are discussed with their thread diagrams and needle layout such as rib or interlock gating with long and short needles in dial and cylinder. The structures are represented by their diagrammatic notations. The following points are observed while representing the structures. The rows of the dots are arranged in pair to represent the needle position. The dots arranged in zigzag manner represent rib gating and dots arranged directly opposite each other represent interlock gating. To represent top row dial needles and bottom row cylinder needles, the letters D and C are used respectively. Diagrammatic stitch notation such as continuous line encircling a dot for knit stitch, line passing round the dot without encircling for tuck stitch and straight line without touching the dot for floor stitch are used. First pair of rows indicates dial and cylinder needles with long and short needles. Similar assumption is to be made for the subsequent row of needles. Jacquard. The term jacquard means that some ornamentation is given to the fabric by using a different types of patterns and designs. So, this double knit jacquard as a structure in which the face and back of a double jacquard knits are remarkably different in pattern and design. Double jacquard knits are easy to identify by their lack of floats on the back. They are often used for cut and sew sweaters, mittens, blankets and dresses. Although there are different patterns on each side, double jacquards are not usually considered reversibles. And it is produced from polyester and rayon, a spun yarn. It finds a lot of application in jackets, skirts and sweaters. Then argyle, the fiber content is polyester and rayon which is a combination of spun and filament and as far as the characteristics are concerned, it is a distinct diamond pattern that intersects with other diamonds and thin lines. Although it is usually constructed in a yarn dyed double knot, double knit jacquard, it can also be knitted in fair isle or intarsia. This fabric is used extensively for socks and sweaters made with two to three colors. Argyle is a knit version of a tartan. Then next item is double jacquard knit and argyle double knit. So let us see the similarities between these two types. Double knits are made on a double needle bed knitting machine creating a fabric with superior dimensional stability, better elastic recovery, thermal retention and improved shape retention. Most important, double knits do not run, although thicker 
than their single knit or interlock counterparts. They also unravel, curl, sag and stretch less and so are often used in tailored applications such as suits and coats. The stretch is generally fairly equal in both directions. Double knits are usually made with two sets of yarns, one for each face. Knit stitches can be made on both sides of the fabric at the same time since the needle beds are independent of each other. These knits are quite stable and are less likely to lose their original shape. They are often stabilized or heat set for shrinkage control. Then the other fabric that is going to be taken up is Ponte di Roma which is produced from a combination of rayon and spandex in the form of spun yarn. This is a double jersey structure and it has got a very good stretch. So they are very useful to be used for suitings than sweaters. The front and back of this fabric has very subtle differences. This fabric was widely popular for the leisure suits of the 1970s and is usually made of a single color. Ponte di Roma is currently enjoying a return to popularity. It finds application in suiting jackets and slacks. Then the next fabric that is going to be considered is double knit metalless. The word metalless means blizzard which describes the surface appearance of this fabric. Double knit metalless borrows its products from complex weaves. The complex double knits uses two distinctly different layers with enough spandex or crepe yarns in one layer to cause shrinkage at different rates between the layers. This causes dramatic puckers in the top layer and is exceedingly three dimensional. This fabric is produced from a combination of nylon and spandex. It is a filament yarn which is texturized and even flat yarns can be used. It finds application in dresses and novelty suiting. The next item is double jacquard knit and argyle double knit similarities and differences. Both the fabrics are double knits. The two fabrics have remarkably different surfaces and purposes. So far we have discussed the single jersey and also the double jersey fabrics. Now we will discuss something about the pile knits. The pile fabrics are those which are meant for terry towels. In woven fabrics it was mentioned that the terry towels could be produced by using a special type of loom called the terry towel loom. And uh, here the sinkers used are different in knitting. Knit terry retains the loops on the surface of the fabric. It is often a better choice than woven terry cloth because it is softer, warmer, more flexible and more absorbent. Knit terry lacks the dimensional stability of woven terry. The fabric is made out of 100% cotton yarn and it finds application in robes, beach wear and infant wear. The next item is baby French terry. This makes use of a blend of cotton and polyester yarn which is a spun one. The characteristics of this fabric are French terry is a finer variation of terry knit with lower flatter loops, miss stitches. French terry is a foundation of sweatshirt fleece in which case it is napped. The prefix baby means that it is a fine lightweight version of French terry. Menswear is producing a much heavier French terry. Three dimensional fabrics and are therefore more absorbent and thermally retentive than other knits. These fabrics are constructed on a jersey body which means that these fabrics curl to the back giving them the appearance of backward jersey. When any kind of texture is added to a jersey, it is usually added to the pearl or backside. French terry is more stable than knit terry and has lower flatter loops. This fabrics knit terry and baby French terry have got certain similarities and differences.
So, in the next fabric that is going to be discussed is velour. The name velour comes from the French word meaning velvet derived from the Latin veliosus. The fabric is finished with a close dense spile weight about 10 to 20 ounces originally made of wool now made in other fibers also. It is a knitted fabric similar in hand to woven velours. The fiber content is 80 percent spun and 20 percent polyester which is a spun yarn. The finishes that are applied are sheared and napped. They are used in dresses, infant wear, jogging suits and coats. The characteristics of this velour fabric is it is made of fine yarns and the loops are cut and the fabric is napped and it is a very soft fabric and knit velvet. The fiber contents are polyester and spandex and the yarn construction is a filament yarn and it is used in blouses, dresses and children's wear. The finishes that are applied are sheared and napped. The characteristics of the fabric are they are like silk with a great deal of luster. Some knit velvets are warp knits and basically they are made from the filament yarns. Then crushed knit velvet. The fiber contents are polyester and spandex. It uses a filament yarn. The finishes that are applied are sheared, napping and crushing. They are used in blouses, dresses and jackets. The characteristics of the fabric are that crushed knit velvet as a fine finish added to the fabric for maximum texture and flatness. Then velour knit velvet and crushed knit velvet. The differences lie in the fact that velour has a deeper, taller pile height than velvet. Although similar to velvet, velour is softer and more flexible with lower luster. Knit velvet has better drape and luster. Crushed knit velvet offers texture. Now we shall take up a very interesting fabric which is called a fleece. It was mentioned in the knitting that two types of arms are used, a coarser one which comes on the front side and a finer one which comes on the back side and fleece is a loose material and this fabric fleece is wool sheared from sheep or other animals in the wool class. This is suitable for the dress materials, sweaters, jackets and active wear. It is napped on both sides and a polyester filament yarn is used for the production of these fleece fabrics. There are various types of fleece fabrics. One thread fleece, three thread fleece, etc. Then the next fabric is sweat shirt fleece. The fiber contents are polyester and cotton and the yarn is a spun type. The finishes that are applied are napped or napping. It is used in sweat shirts, hoodies and athletic wear. Fleece and sweat shirts fleece there are a lot of similarities and differences also. The fleeces are the thickest and least drapery of the file fabrics. They are also the softest and warmest. The fleece is a nap on both sides and very soft and fuzzy. It is known for its thermal retentive qualities. On the other hand, sweatshirt fleece is napped on only one side and is usually worn with a soft side next to the skin. Fleece is often called a double faced fleece while sweatshirt fleece is often called a single faced fleece. Additionally, fleeces are often made with polyester or at least with filament yarns while sweatshirt fleece is usually made with cotton or cotton like fibers made of spun yarns. Then warp knits. In the warp knitting, 
it was mentioned that there are two categories. One is the tricot, the other is the rachel. In the case of the warp nets, we have basically two categories. One is the tricot and another one is the rachel. While the tricot technology is meant for producing finer fabrics such as shirtings, dress materials, etc. The rachel technology is meant for producing industrial textiles such as filter fabrics or mosquito nets or the cushion fabrics, upholstery and so on and so forth. And um, the tricot fabrics are noted for their very fine gauge whereas rachel fabrics are known for their coarseness. And the Russell technology is basically meant for producing all coarser type of fabrics such as tulle, T-U-L-L-E, tulle and uh, this uh, net fabrics and so many other items. Double nets, I have already told you that it comprises this uh, French double PK, Swiss double PK, Ponte di Roma and uh, Metallas and so many other types and all. And Russian technology in warp netting is also used for making these uh, laces, triple mesh fabrics, power mesh fabrics, fishnet and crochet and point D spirit. And Tricot technology is used for making sliver knit, satin, tricot, swimwear, lingerie items, athletic mesh, etc. And in weft knitting, the types of fabrics that are produced are t-shirts, brushed sweater jersey. Brushing means rubbing the fabric by using a roller covered with wire points and this brushing provides the fabric certain other characteristics which it does not possess before brushing. For example, better absorption, good drape, good feel, handle, etc. In fact, most of these uh, double jersey fabrics are brushed and we also produced a, a fabric which has got this lace effect in uh, single jersey socks are made and uh, fleece fabrics are made in the case of weft knitting. A fleece fabric is one which is constructed from two types of yarns. One is a coarser yarn say 10s open end yarn and 30s ring spun yarn and these two yarns are used so that a fleece fabric is made. There are three thread fleece which I am going to tell you later and uh, this Fleece fabrics have become very popular in t-shirts and after making the fabric, if the fabrics are brushed, then their appearance enhance, is enhanced and denim fabrics also can be made using this uh, weft knitting technology and uh, jacquard jersey and uh, the sweater jersey can be made. Glouses can be produced using this weft knitting machine which are used for protecting the hands while cutting something or working on a machine. So even warp knitting technology can be used for making these glouses which are used in the industry particularly in the chemical industries where there is the uh, question of touching these uh, acids or alkalis of a very high concentration and all. Now, we will discuss certain fabrics which are produced by this tricot technology. The filament yarn used is nylon and uh, the application of this fabric is loungerie. Tricot is a warp knit fabric made with two sets of threads, fine vertical veils on the face and more or less pronounced crosswise ribs on the back which are characteristics of the fabric. Tricot 
made with yarn crossing from a warp is highly run resistant and is sometimes called double warp tricot, two bar tricot, glove silk or charm use. Open work ribbon like novelty effects may be produced on a three bar machine. The fabric made with one set of yarn is sometimes called single bar tricot or single warp tricot. When a plain knit is employed, the fabric is called jersey cloth. It is also made in stripes or reversing the direction of the thread in meshes and a great variety of design. It is generally made of nylon, acetate or rayon. A class of weaves used for staple woolen or worsted fabrics which produce a horizontal rib effect on the fabric is another characteristic. When the rib runs in the direction of the warp or vertically the fabric is called tricot long. It is tricot is often called tricot jersey because of the fact that it is constructed in the same manner as jersey but on different machinery like a jersey front and back of these fabrics are different. Tricots do not run or ravel. Although there is a great variety in terms of weight, most of these fabrics are quite lightweight although they are not always sheer. Then we are going to take up this uh, suited tricot. It is made out of polyester and it is a filament yarn and the finishes are suited or emerized. Emerization is nothing but brushing that is the fabric is passed through a roller containing these wire points and the application of the suited tricot is in jackets and sportswear. The characteristics are suited tricot is present in several different markets as a synthetic sewed alternative. Sewed is nothing but a soft material something like a leather. The fabric is suited with sandpaper to make it very soft being fuzzy. The next type of fabric that is going to be discussed is Sliver Knit Fox Fure. The polyester filament is used here in the form of a filament and sliver is used and it finds application in coat linings, fake furs, stuffed animals. Sl sl sliver knits are a high pile knit which is a three dimensional fabric. Instead of using a third set of yarns on the surface like other pile structures, the knitting needles incorporate sliver cleaned carded fiber into each stitch. In this way, sliver knits are much hairier as they are not simply sheared loops. These knits often feature animal prints and are sometimes difficult to discern over real fures. Sliver knits can be warp or weft knits. Sliver is a product which is obtained after carding process. When loose cotton is taken up for yarn production, the first stage is a blow room and after the blow room we have the cards where the material is individualized and it is converted to a sliver. A sliver is nothing but a long rope of a certain diameter. Tricot, suited tricot and sliver knit similarities and differences. Tricot comes from the French word tricoter meaning to knit. Tricots are made of all knit stitches with veils on the front and courses on the back usually referred to as overlaps and underlaps respectively. Tricot generally has less stretch than weft knits with some elasticity in the crossways direction but very little stretch in the length unless spandex is added. Although tricot construction is Faster than weft knitting, it also requires more uniform, higher cost yarns for construction. The differences, weight and finishes are the determinants among these fabrics. The tricot presented here is sheer, so it is easy to see its front and back. Suited tricot as an emerized finish, this sliver knit fox fur is a high pile knit. Then the next fabric is satin tricot. Its fiber content is nylon which is in the form of a filament. 
Satin tricot is made with long floats on the front of the fabric to simulate the floats of a satin weave. This is a knit counterpart to satins. Note that the front and back of this fabric are more remarkably different than simple tricots. Face is much more lustrous. Satin tricot has excellent stability in the width and does not curl. And swimwear tricot. It is made out of nylon and spandex combination. It is a filament yarn. It is used in swimwear, da dance and athletic wear. Swimwear tricot is a highly is a higher count densely knitted tricot with a lot of spandex suitable for spin wear. It is usually less shiny than satin tricot and offers four way stretch. Then athletic mesh. This fabric is a jersey fabric which is a classic football basic base basketball jersey mesh made with skipped stitches to create holes in the fabric. It is often called eyelet mesh. Aesthetic athletic mesh can be made of warp and weft knits. It is produced from a nylon spandex yarn which is a filament one. It finds application in basketball jerseys and shorts. Satin tricot simwear tricot and athletic mesh the similarities are all the three are tricot. Satin tricot as a lustrous face, swimwear tricot as a generous portion of spandex and athletic mesh is the only tricot with folds. As was pointed out, there are two technologies under warp knitting. One is the tricot, the other one is a rachel. And there are a lot of differences between these two technologies in the sense that in the case of tricot, bearded needle is used, which is a knitting needle, and in the case of Russian, latch needle is used. Sometimes a compound needle is also used for tricot. In the case of a single jersey weft knitted fabric, a latch needle is used. And earlier, the type of needle used was uh, the braided needle. And there are lots of differences between the Russell and Tricot. Russell is a coarse technology and uh, many of the fabrics that are produced by these Russell warp knitting machines are nets and uh, upholstery cloth and uh, lingerie items, laces and uh, cricket nets in the, in the cricket field. We are going to discuss one of the most important uh, fabrics under Russell, which is called Talle. It is a fine silk cotton or a man-made fiber machine made net with a hexagonal mesh. It is softer than maline and it is used for millinery and dress trimming or embroidered forming lace. It is derived from the French city of Talle. And in the 18th century, it was applied to all hexagonal mesh fabrics, regardless of where they were made. It was first made by machinery in Nottingham, England in 1768. The tallet is produced by a polyester filament and it has a net-like structure with a diamond or hex shaped openings and is stiff finish like organdy. It is often used in layers to create volume and ruffles. It is used in netting veils, shears, ballet apparel and tutors. And the next fabric is Russian lace. It is produced from a polyester filament and it is a structure made on a X net or tallet ground. This is the most common lace type in the marketplace and has many variations in terms of weight and construction. It is used in wedding, evening wear and lingerie. The next fabric that comes under Russell is cut press. Russell lace and cut press are one and the same 
and cut press as a distinctive type of zigzag patterning made on a Russell machine. Russells can be made with spun filament or novelty yarn. When made with a textured filament, the structure locks together better. Russells are easily distinguished from tricots because Russell structures are open constructions while tricots are not. The most common use of Russell is a lace type. Actual laces are looped, twisted or knotted. Russells are knitted. This fabric is made from polyester and metallic fiber. It is used as evening wear and lingerie. Next fabric is hex net. This is produced from nylon filament and it as the name itself suggests hex net is a soft flexible hexagonal grid often called stretch mesh. This is one of the simplest rushels and is often the foundation of rushel laces. Hex net is quite transparent and needs a lining in most applications and it is used in intimate apparel and in juniors. Then triple mesh, this is produced from polyester which is a textured filament and it is used in intimate apparel, lingerie and junior tops. The characteristics of the fabric include the back bar comes across the X net and fills in the mesh structure. The fabric feels about three times heavier than the original which is how this fabric gets its name. Triple mesh has less stretch and is much less transparent than hex net. The next fabric which is taken up is power mesh. This is produced from 82 percent nylon and 18 percent spandex yarn which is a filament one and uh, its characteristics include that it is it has four way stretch due to its ap approximately 20 percent spandex. This provides 100 percent recovery which explains why it is used extensively in brass and lingerie. Visually the structure looks like four sided bricks running vertically. Power mesh is also used in tan through bathing suits. The yarn is that is used is a filament one and it is used as intimate apparel and in lingerie. The next item that is going to be dealt with is hex net and uh, power mesh, triple mesh. We will mention the similarities and the differences that are found in these structures. As far as the similarities are concerned, X net is a hexagonal or six sided structure and the foundation for triple mesh and many other Russell type face structures. The terms mesh and net are often used interchangeably to describe these and other factors. The differences lie in the fact that these fabrics differ in weight and stretch. Triple mesh is basically a hex net with holes filled in. Power mesh has four way stretch. The next item that is going to be discussed is fish net. Fish net is a larger mesh structure with diamond or egg shaped openings. Unlike talle, this fabric is soft and clings to the body without the stiffening finish. It is made out of a combination of nylon and spandex and the yarn used is a textured one. It is used in stockings, gloves and juniors. The next item is Russell crochet. This is Russell imitating crochet which is a very common face lace type. It is usually cotton like using spun yarns. The filament used is polyester and it is used in evening wear and lingerie. Next fabric that is going to be taken up is point D esprit. It is often called spot knit. This is a warp knit equivalent of dotted Swiss and is a long standing classic. There are some larger variations of this fabric, but the smaller version is the original. It is made out of nylon which is a filament and it finds application in bedding, in evening wear and in lingerie. We will discuss some differences between the knitted fabric and the woven fabric. A woven fabric is stiffer 
and it is thick and it has got a very good dimensional stability in the sense that the fabric can be handled and uh, no doubt it shrinks after each wash but then the fabric has got maintained the same dimensions maybe something different from the original after washing but a knitted fabric is either exists in the form of a flat shape or a circular shape in the case of updated fabrics it is in the form of a circular shape and fabrics are very soft and they are having more shrinkage as compared to the woven fabric and that means the dimensional stability is somewhat poorer in the case of knitted fabric as against the woven fabrics and uh, it absorbs more moisture it has got a very good draping characteristics drape means fitting to the body a knitted fabric fits much better than that of a woven fabric and hence its drapeability is very good in fact the drape is very low in the case of the knitted fabric as against a woven fabric and uh, that is an indication that knitted fabrics have got very good drape we shall discuss the different types of stitches which are used in knitting first of all we have a loop like this this is called the needle loop this is called the sinker loop so we have what is called a knit stitch then we have a tuck stitch this is indicated by a triangle and the knit stitch is indicated by this one and there is also another stitch called miss stitch there is no stitch at all it is a dummy the needle does not make any stitch so this is the needle stitch this is a tuck stitch and a miss stitch is represented by a dot the use of this tuck stitch along with the knit stitch leads to a fabric which has got floats and one example of a knitted fabric which is having both knit and tuck stitch is lacasta so we have double lacasta single lacasta and uh, these are all the knitted fabrics having different types of stitches in warp knitting also we have these terminologies that is the knit stitch and the tuck stitch which we will see later then we will recapitulate our discussions on this warp knitting technology there are two types of technology under warp knitting one is the tricot technology the other is the ruchel technology in the case of the tricot technology we have a limitation in the guide bar maybe a single guide bar or two guide bars the back guide bar and also the front guide bar and the needle that we use is a braided needle and the gauge of the machine is given of course in terms of the needles per inch and we have several bars here one is a needle bar the guide bar and the sinker bar and the guide bar moves in between the needles the guide bar executes two types of motions one is the shogging motion that is straight line and another is a swinging motion that means taking one revolution say 360 degrees and it may be a open lap or a closed lap i pointed out to you that this is the concept of an open lap and this is the closed lap and there are two more terms that is overlap and underlap it is only by the combination of this overlap and underlaps do we get a warp knitted fabric 
So some of the fabrics we discussed were tricot, then two a tricot produced by two guide bars, namely the back guide bar and the front guide bar, and some of the warp knitted structures like lock knit, reverse lock knit, satin, shark skin, queen's card, double atlas. These are all some of the structures which are used in warp knitting and they are all very popular ones. They are used for shirtings, dress material and uh, for uh, decorative fabrics. If you use colored yarns, we get beautiful patterns in these warp knitted fabrics. Now we will spend a few minutes on these Russell fabrics. Russell makes use of the latch needle about which we have already seen in weft knitting. And here the number of guide bars are more, maybe about 40. So more complicated designs are possible. And Russell technology is eminently suitable for making technical textiles, for example, nets and for making processes, which are replacements when some of our parts in our body wear out. For example, the blood vessels wear out due to constant use and they require replacement. The replacement of the blood vessels in the heart is being done by use of this warp knitted fabric which is produced by Russell technology. And we have got nets, for example, Talle is a very popular net and Marquisit net. And furnishing fabrics are made, lingerie items are made using this Russell technology. We shall see the structures of two very popular Russell knitted structures. One is Talle, the other is a Marquisit. Talle. So this is the talle structure which is produced by Russell loom. As you find here, there is a pillar stitch, there is a close stitch and there is another close stitch here and these are all the interlacements which are laid in the fabric. The 
this is a net with a hexagonal hole produced from two guide bars, the front bar knitting on one needle for a number of courses and then on the adjacent needle for a similar number of courses before returning to the original wheel. The second bar lays in so that any one thread moves with one front bar thread. The lapping movements for a three course tally are as shown here. So this is the Marquesit net which is used for the cricket ground and also for fishing. It is a fish net which can be used and uh, this gives the details about this Marquesit net. It is a pillar stitch and a lay in here and another lay in here. So this makes the whole of this Marquesit. Jersey. Jersey is a generic name and uh, it is also called lingerie or tissue jersey. It is made of 100 percent viscose rayon and uh, the particulars of the fabric are 36 into 33. 36 courses and 33 veils are there. It is a piece dyed fabric and weight is 2.2 ounces per square yard. If it is multiplied by 33.91, we get GSM that is gram per square meter. It finds application in lingerie and tops. This is a very light weight tissue jersey that could also be called a 36 gauge 2.2 ounces baby jersey. 
and Jersey was first made on the island of Jersey off the English coast and was used for fishing garments. These fabrics have the same name no matter the weight or count making it easier to identify that many of the preceding fabrics. For that reason it is always helpful to add information as a prefix to this fabric such as sweater jersey. The industry often uses the actual weight to determine one from another such as a 2 ounces baby jersey. Jersey also called single knit or plain knit is a fabric made of all knit stitches which means it has veils knit stitches on the front and courses pearl stitches on the back and uh, a cursory look will tell you that the orientation of the front is vertical and the back is horizontal. In addition note that these fabrics are not stable they curl easily. Take two bottom edges of any of the fabrics and gently pull the corners apart. This fabric curls to the face if it curls downward then it is upside down turn it over not all knit fabrics curl but these certainly do because of this quality jersey fabrics stretch pretty much equally in both directions they also sag shrink run and ravel this is also a single jersey fabric which is used in t-shirts but it is a little heavier its weight is 5.34 ounces per square yard and it makes use of the dyed yarns. The yarns used are of spun type and it has got a construction of 42 into 43. These are used for t-shirts and bedding. This jersey is a common weight and hand for t-shirts or juniors contemporary topic tops. This is a 42 gauge 5.34 ounces jersey. This is also a brushed sweater jersey. Now when fabrics after they have been knitted are subjected to a brushing action that means they are passed through a roller containing wire points all the fibers in it are pulled up and then they are made soft. So that operation is called brushing or sanding and it makes use of a spun yarn the counts used are 60. 16 into 16 that is 16 veils and 16 courses. It, it is a printed fabric, it is a napped one and it weighs 4.71 ounces per square yard. It is used in sweaters and also in cardigans. This is a bulkier jersey and this fabric is called a sweater jersey to assist the buyer in understanding the type and weight of the jersey being offered. This is a 16 gauge printed and napped 4.71 ounces per 4.71 ounces jersey. This is a weft knit jersey and it is also called slub jersey because it has been produced from a yarn containing slubs about which some discussion was made. And it is made of 100% rayon and the yarn construction is spun and slub and the particulars of the fabric are 38 into 42, 42 represent courses, 38 represents veils and weight of the fabric is 3.69 ounces per square yard which after multiplying with 33.91 gives you grams per square meter. It is used in junior tops dresses. The characteristics of the fabric are that slub jersey is used extensively for the junior marketplace. The texture on the surface of the fabric is due to deliberately irregular yarns. It is also a weft jersey and it is made out of 95 percent polyester and 5 percent of spandex. Spandex is lycra which has got the extension and it is made of microdinier filament. The particulars of the fabric are 60 into 60 and it is printed the weight of the fabric is 6.14 ounces per square yard and these are used in junior tops and dresses. This is also a weft knit jersey it is made from poly spun the fiber contents are polyester and spandex. The particulars of the fabric are 50 into 68 
the it is a printed fabric and the weight of this is uh, 6.02 ounces per square yard it is used in junior contemporary tops and dresses poly span also called single span is a fine jersey with a soft and smooth hand usually printed this fabric as four way stretch and is used in clingy garments this is a denim jersey because it looks like a denim and it makes use of a cotton polyester and spandex materials the yarn is a spun one the particulars of the fabric are 38 into 43 that is 43 courses and 32 veils per inch the yarn is a dyed one and its weight is 5.58 ounces per square yard it is used in jeggings tops and sweats denim jersey is the knit industry's answer to coordinates for the denim industry fabric is not denim as it is not a twill denim is used here as an adjective describing and differentiating the type of jersey fabric is made with blue and white yarns using mist stitches that successfully imitate the twill structure due to floats on the back the white threads are cotton and the blue ones are polyester this is fair isle jacquard jersey it is made out of 100% polyester yarn and the particulars of the fabric are 28 into 22 and it is a yarn dyed material its weight is 5.01 ounces per square yard it is used in sweaters and tops fair isle uses mist stitches to create color patterning which is evidenced by the floats on the back of the fabric this fabric is often used for heavier gauge sweaters but can be found in finer gauge jacquard units like this one the floats often impede elasticity and increase the weight of the fabric weft knit rib knits which is a double jersey structure so it is having a construction of 1 into 1 rib the fiber contents are cotton and polyester it is a spun yarn the particulars of the fabric are 30 into 42 and it is a stock dyed material the weight of the fabric is 5.38 ounces per square yard and it is used in t-shirts tanks pajamas cuffs waistbands as far as the characteristics of this 1 into 1 are concerned they are created with a combination of knit and purl stitches evident on the surface of this fabric a 1 into 1 rib knit is created by knitting one stitch and then purling one stitch and is noted as k1 p1 this is accomplished on a double needle bed machine as two sets of needles are required the fabric and in the fabric the courses and the veils can be easily seen a 2 into 2 rib is made by knitting two stitches followed by purling two stitches k2 p2 and is identified by the two verses visible in each rib at first glance the face and back of the rib knit appear the same they are however technically opposite where the raised rib or veil is present on one side the recessed course is directly behind it on the other the benefits of a rib knit over a jersey or that rib knits do not curl at the edges or much more stable and have the greatest elasticity recovery in the horizontal direction this means that rib knits keep their overall shape better and uh, they are often present at the waist cuff and neckline ribs are used to create a snug fit so that the garment stays tight in those areas retaining warmth and wearability here is another example for the rib knit this is uh, made from 2 into 2 rib knit and the yarn used contains rayon and spandex it is a spun yarn the particulars of the fabric are 42 into 42 it is a stock dyed material and weighs 5.31 ounces per square yard this fabric is used in t-shirts tanks and pajamas this is pk knit this is made from 100% cotton and it is a spun yarn the particulars of the fabric are 26 into 23 it is a yarn dyed fabric 
weight of the fabric is 7.14 ounces per square yard and it is used as polo shirts, tops and dresses. PK uses tuck stitches to create a three dimensional quality uh, to the fabric. This is a fabric appropriated from the woven market for its absorbent and resilient qualities. PK is used extensively in the polo shirt market. Although this fabric is made on a jersey body, it is often made as a rib knit or double knit. This is a, called a thermal knit and it makes use of 100 percent cotton, which is a spun yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 40 into 40. It is a printed fabric. The weight of the fabric is 3.66 ounces per square yard and it is used in pajamas, thermal underwear. Thermal or waffle knit is another variation copied from oven fabrics. Because of the extreme three dimensional quality of the fabric, it is very absorbent, can retain body heat and is often chosen for thermal underwear and shirts. Now we are going to introduce point tell about which we have already discussed. It is made of 100 percent polyester, which is a spun yarn. The counts used are 23 into 33. That means the particulars of the fabric, the courses and the veils. Usually the courses in a fabric are more compared to the veils and it is a piece dyed fabric. Weight of the fabric is 4.19 ounces per square yard. It is used in tanks, top, light cardigans. Pointel is the most decorative of the rib variations. This fabric generally has lacy patterns in the shape of hearts, stars or the like and is often found in pastel colors. Although this one is made on a jersey body, it is often found on a one into one rib knit. A variation in the rib structure is presented here. This fabric is called slinky and it is made from a blend consisting of acetate and spandex. It is a filament yarn which is used and the particulars of the fabric are 68 into 55. It is having a weight of 8.76 ounces per square yard. It is used in Missy sportswear. Slinky is a finer one, to one into one rib knit often used in the Missy market. Owing to the large amount of spandex in this fabric, it has a lot of swing and movement along with excellent recovery. This contemporary fabric is named by the trade, not history. As such, it does not have an original fiber family and is always made of man-made fibers, acetate, nylon, rayon or polyester. The fabric can be extremely drapey, forgiving and flattering. This fabric is also a variation in the rib knit. It is called onion skin and it is made of polyester filament yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 32 into 42 and it is a printed fabric. The weight of the fabric is 3.89 ounces per square yard and it is used in junior tops and loungery. Onion skin is a rib fabric made with either thick and thin or high and low twist yarns importing a textured appearance and dry hand. This fabric shows up in a number of light weights in the junior and loungery markets. This is a matty jersey. It is made of 100 percent polyester and it is a over twisted filament. The particulars of the fabric are 68 and 36. It is a piece dyed fabric and the weight of the fabric is 7.3 ounces per square yard. It is used in evening wear, dresses and tops. Matty jersey is made with a crepe twist or textured filament yarn in a one into one rib or interlock. Matty jersey is not a jersey. The yarn structure gives the fabric a matty surface, incredible drape and elasticity. This fabric appears in more formal markets because of its drape and overall performance. This is also a variation in rib. It is called sheer matty jersey and it is made of 100 percent polyester over twisted filament. The particulars of the fabric are 68 and 50. It is a printed fabric and the weight of the fabric is 2.98 ounces per square yard. It is used in tops, tanks and blouses. Sheer matty jersey is used in lightweight junior and contemporary tops. It is made on an interlock rib or jersey body. This one is a one into one rib 
this is also another variation in the rib knit. It's, it is called cable knit variation and is made of a spun yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 12 into 18. It is a piece dyed fabric and the weight of the fabric is 9.09 .09 ounces per square yard. It is used in sweaters and scarves. Cable knit is a variation of a sweater weight rib knit. The cable pattern is used for texture, surface interest and design. The pattern is a twisted or plated cable design that is evident on one side only. A true cable knit runs in the vertical direction. This fabric is a variation on the cable theme. The original fiber family is wool, but many synthetic and man-made fibers are used today. This is an example for pearl knit fabric. It is made of 100% polyester spun yarn whose count is 30s. The particulars of the fabric are 12 into 13. It is a piece dyed fabric. The weight of the fabric is 13.26 ounces per square yard. It is used in sweaters, gloves and scarves. Like a rib knit fabric, pearl knits appear the same on the face and back of the fabric. Instead of veils, courses are visible on both sides. The fabric is named for the pearl knit stitch which has courses on the front, but in this case it is difficult if not impossible to distinguish the technical face from the back. This fabric is made by making one row of knit stitches followed by one row of pearl stitches continuing in this pattern for the entire fabric. Pearl knits are the slowest to produce and therefore are the most costly of the three basic knit fabrics. This fabric is used for the textured surface provided by its courses and for its stability. The alternating row of stitches in pearl knitting give it the highest elasticity in the warp or length direction. Pearls knit, pearl knits do not curl or quite stable and are better insulators than most knits. When simple texture is required, an inside out jersey will work but curling will result. Pearl knit fabric is superior in terms of performance and insulation. The knit industry often calls this construction links because it is made on a links machine. Now we are going to introduce to you the interlock fabric. As it was mentioned, the interlock fabric is made of two one into one ribs and uh, this fabric is made out of 100% rayon filament and the particulars of the fabric are 84 into 50. It is a piece dyed fabric. The weight of the fabric is 3.75 ounces per square yard. It is used in sportswear and in dresses. Interlock is a variation of a rib net on a double needle bed. The face and back of this fabric are identical. Veils are perfectly lined up behind the veils. Rib nets have veils lined up behind courses. Interlock is often finer than a rib net. It is a very stable net with low shrinkage and great stability. Runs can be a problem. This is another example of a, an interlock but called weft knit interlock, interlock. This is made out of a cotton yarn which is a spun. The particulars of the fabric are 72 into 40. It is a piece dyed fabric. The weight of the fabric is 6.11 ounces per square yard. It is used in sportswear and also in t-shirts. This fabric is called silk jersey and it is made of filament silk. The particulars of the fabric are 80 into 54. It is a printed fabric and weighs 4.9 ounces per square yard. It is used in dresses and blouses. Silk jersey has a particularly drapey aesthetic. The fabric here is a printed interlock, yet the industry often calls this fabric silk jersey. A printed silk interlock is presented here as it has its own unique identity in terms of aesthetics and performance. It is simply another interlock. This is a double knit jacquard. It is made out of polyester rayon blended spun yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 33 into 30 each face. It is a yarn dyed material and weighs 6.2 ounces per square yard. It is used in jackets, skirts and sweaters. The face and back of double jacquard knits are remarkably different in pattern and design. Double jacquard knits are easy to identify by their lack of floats on the back and they are often used for cut and 
suits, sweaters, mittens, blankets and dresses. Although there are different patterns on each side, double jacquards are not usually considered reversible. This is also another example for double knits. It is, it is called Argyle double knit and it is made of polyester rayon combination. One is the spun and the other one is a filament. The particulars of the fabric are 26 into 18. It is a yarn dyed material. It weighs 5.49 ounces per square yard and it is used in sweaters, socks and cardigans. Argyle is a distinct diamond pattern that intersects with each diamond with other diamonds and thin lines. Although it is usually constructed in a yarn dyed double knit jacquard, it can also be knitted in fair isle or intarsia. This fabric is used extensively for socks and sweaters. It is made with two to three colors. Argyle is a knit version of a tartan. We are going to introduce to you a very good uh, fabric called Ponte di Roma. It is made of rayon spandex, spun yarn and uh, the particulars of the fabric are 36 into 40. It is a piece dyed fabric. It weighs 10.68 ounces per square yard and it is used as suitings, jackets and slacks. Ponte di Romas have a little if any stretch so they are more appropriate for suitings than sweaters. The front and back of this fabric has very subtle differences. This fabric was widely popular for the leisure suits of the 1970s and is usually made of a single color. Ponte di Roma is currently enjoying a return to popularity. This is again a double knit metallis which makes use of nylon spandex combination. The particulars of the fabric are 56 into 94 it is a piece dyed fabric and weighs 6.29 ounces per square yard. It is used in dresses and novelty suitings. The word metallis means blizzard, which describes the surface appearance of this fabric. Double knit metallis borrows its properties from complex weaves. The complex double knit uses two distinctly different layers with enough spandex or crepe yarns in one layer to cause shrinkage at different rates between the layers. This causes dramatic puckers in the top layer and is exceedingly three dimensional. We are now going to discuss pile knits and the fabric is called knit terry. It is made of 100% cotton which is a spun yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 26 into 22 and it is used produced from dyed yarns. The weight of the fabric is 7.09 ounces per square yard. It is used in robes, beachwear and infant wear. Knit terry retains the loops on the surface of the fabric. It is often a better choice than woven terry cloth because it is softer, warmer, more flexible and more absorbent. Knit terry lacks the dimensional stability of woven terry. Weft knit, pile knits. This is called French terry and it is produced from cotton polyester spun yarn the particulars of the fabric are 36 into 40. The weight of the fabric is 5.46 ounces per square yard and it is used in sportswear, robes, sweatshirts and beachwear. French terry is a finer variation of terry knit with lower flatter loops, miss stitches. French terry is a foundation of sweatshirt fleece in which case it is napped. The prefix baby means it is a fine lightweight version of French terry menswear is producing a much heavier French terry. Pile knit fabric, it is called veller. The fiber contents are 80% cotton and 20% polyester. It is a spun yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 30 into 40. It is a piece dyed fabric and the finishes that are applied are shearing and napping. The weight of the fabric is 7.91 ounces per square yard. It is used in dresses, infant wear, jogging suits. A veller is a knit counterpart to woven velveteen swatch which we have discussed. It is made of fine yarns. The loops are cut and the fabric is napped. This is a knit velvet 
which is produced from polyester spandex, both are filament yarns and the particulars of the fabric are 48 into 46. It is a piece dyed fabric and the finishes are sheared and napped. Weight of the fabric is 9.24 ounces per square yard. It is used in blouses, dresses, children's wear. Knit velvet is made with filament yarns. The fabric is very silk like with a great deal of luster. Some knit velvets are warp knits. This is a crushed knit velvet fabric, which makes use of polyester spandex filament yarns. Particulars of the fabric are 38 into 48. It is a piece dyed fabric and the finishes are sheared, napped and crushed. The weight of the fabric is 7.89 ounces per square yard. It is used in blouses, dresses and jackets. Crushed knit velvet as a final finish added to the fabric for maximum texture and flatness. We now introduce to you the pile knits. It is also called a fleece fabric. It is made of 100% polyester filament yarn. Particulars of the fabric are 7, 32 into 24. It is a printed fabric, a camouflage fledge print and it is napped on both sides. The weight of the fabric is 6.13 ounces per square yard. It is used in jackets, sweats and active wear which is included in pile knits is sweatshirt fleece. The fiber contents are polyester and cotton which is a spun yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 21 into 40 and the finishes are napped on one side. The weight of the fabric is 7.53 ounces per square yard. It is used in sweatshirts, hoodies, athletic wear. So far we had shown you samples which belong to these weft knit fabrics. We saw this fleece fabrics, the velar fabrics and so on so, and so forth. Now we are going to introduce to you the warp knits about which we had a lot of uh, discussion. Now in warp knit there is a fabric called tricot and it is made of nylon filament and the particulars of the fabric are 40 into 47. It is a piece dyed fabric and uh, the weight of the fabric is 0.99 ounces per square yard. It is used in lingerie. Pronounced tricot. Tricot is often called tricot jersey because it is constructed in the same manner as jersey but on different machinery. Like a jersey, front and back of this fabric are different. Tricots do not run or ravel. Although there is a great variety in terms of weight, most of these fabrics are quite lightweight. Although they are not always sheer. This is also another example for suited tricot. It is made out of polyester filament yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 46 into 35 and it is a piece dyed fabric. The finishes are suited or emerized. The weight of the fabric is 4.74 ounces per square yard and it is used in jackets and sportswear. Suited tricot is present in several markets as a synthetic suit alternative. Fabric is suited with sandpaper to make it very soft without being fuzzy. This is a sliver knit fox fur a warp knitted fabric, a tricot fabric. The yarn used are filament and sliver. Sliver is a product which is produced in the beginning of the spinning process. In fact, fibers are opened and cleaned and passed through a machine called carding. The carding machine produces a sliver which is used in this fabric and it is dyed also. The weight of the fabric is 10.93 ounces per square yard. It is used in coat linings, fake furs, stuffed animals. Sliver knits are a high pile knit which is a three dimensional fabric. Instead of using a third set of yarns on the surface like other pile structures, the knitting needles incorporate sliver cleaned carded fiber into each stitch. In this way, sliver knits are much harsher, much hairier as they are not simply sheared loops. These knits often feature animal prints and are sometimes difficult to discern from real fures. Sliver knits can be warp or weft knits. This one is on a tricot body. This is a satin tricot about which the particulars of this uh, fabric were given. 
uh, it is made out of nylon which is a filament yarn the particulars of the fabric are 80 into 68 it is a piece dyed fabric its weight is 3.96 ounces per square yard it is used in swimwear dance athletic wear satin tricot is made with long floats on the front of the fabric to simulate the floats of a satin weave. This is the knit counterpart to satins. Note that the front and back of this fabric are more remarkably different than simple tricots. The face is much more lustrous. Satin tricot has excellent stability in the width and does not curl. This fabric has got a number of pores as you can see. It is called swimwear tricot and the contents are nylon and spandex. It is a filament yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 60 into 70 and it is a printed fabric. The weight of the fabric is 5.58 ounces per square yard. It is used in swimwear, dance, athletic wear. Swimwear tricot is a highly higher count, densely knitted tricot with a lot of spandex suitable for swimwear. It is usually less shiny than satin tricot and offers four-way stretch. This is called athletic mesh and made of nylon spandex combination. Both are filament yarns. The particulars of the fabric are 40 into 74. The fabric is piece dyed and it weighs 4.08 ounces per square yard. It finds application in basketball jerseys and in shorts. This is classic basketball jersey mesh made with skipped stitches to create holes in the fabric. Often called eyelet mesh, athletic mesh can be made of warp or weft knits. This one is tricot. Now we are going to introduce to you the fabric called talle. This was demonstrated in one of the lectures. It makes use of a filament yarn and it is made on a Russell machine. The particulars of the fabric are 17 into 22. It is a piece dyed fabric and it is given a stiffening finish. finish. The weight of the fabric is 5.58 ounces per square yard. It is used in netting, veils, veils shears, ballot apparel, tutors. Talle has a net like structure with diamond or X shaped openings and a stiff finish like organdy. It is often used in layers to create volume and ruffles. This is another example for a Russell fabric. It was pointed out that Russell technology was more suitable for making laces. So this is a lace fabric which contains 100% polyester which is a filament yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 17 into 30. It is a piece dyed fabric. It weighs 1.49 ounces per square yard. It is used in bedding, evening wear and lingerie. Rachel is a lace -like, like structure made on a hex net or talle ground. This is the most common lace type in the marketplace and has many variations in terms of weight and construction. This is an another example for a Russell fabric. It is called cut press and it uses a metallic yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 24 into 11. It is a yarn dyed material. It weighs 3.07 ounces per square yard and it is used in evening wear and in lingerie. Cut press as a distinctive type of zigzag patterning made on a Russell machine. Another example for the Russell fabric is the X net. This is made out of nylon filament and the particulars are 48 into 30. It is a printed fabric. Its weight is 1.88 ounces per square yard. It is used in intimate apparel juniors. As its name suggests, X net is a soft, flexible, hexagonal grid often called stretch mesh. This is one of the simplest Russells and is often the foundation of Russell laces. X net is quite transparent and needs a lining in most applications. This is another example for a Russell warp knit fabric. It, it is made out of 100% polyester textured filament. The particulars of the fabric are 16 to 40 and it is a printed one. The weight of the fabric is 2.27 ounces per square yard. 
It is used in intimate apparel, loungery and junior tops. In triple mesh, the back bar comes across the X nut and fills in the mesh structure. The fabric feels about three times heavier than the original, which is how this fabric gets its name. Triple mesh has less stretch and is much less transparent than hex net. This is called a power mesh fabric. It makes use of 82% nylon and 18% spandex, which is a filament yarn. Particulars of the fabric are 35 into 32. It is a piece dyed fabric and weighs 2.15 ounces per square yard and it is used in intimate apparel and loungery item. Power mesh has four way stretch due to its approximately 20% spandex. This provides 100% recovery which explains why it is used extensively in brass and loungery. Visually the structure looks like four sided bricks running vertically. Power mesh is also used in tan through bathing suits. This is a fishnet which is produced by this rational technology. It makes use of a combination of nylon and spandex material. It is a textured yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 26 into 60. It is a printed fabric and weighs 2.79 ounces per square yard. It is used in stockings, gloves and juniors. Fishnet is a larger mesh structure with diamond or hex shaped openings. Unlike talle, this fabric is soft and clings to the body without the stiffening finish. This is another example for a rachel crochet. It is made out of polyester which is a spun yarn. The particulars of the fabric are 38 into 41. It is a piece dyed fabric. The weight of the fabric is 5.38 ounces per square yard and it is used in evening wear and in luxury item. This is Russell imitating crochet, which is a very common fair lace type. It is usually cotton like using spun yarns. This fabric is called Point D Esprit. It is made out of nylon filament. The particulars of the fabric are 24 into 23. It is a piece dyed fabric. The weight of the fabric is 2.79 ounces per square yard and it is used in wedding, evening wear and loungery. Often called spot knit, this is the warp knit equivalent of dotted Swiss and is a long standing classic. There are some larger variations of this fabric, but the smaller version is the original. Here is an example of a tricot interfacing fabric and it is fusible tricot interlacing. It makes use of polyester filament and the counts or the particulars are 26 into 21. It is a piece dyed fabric and the finish that is given is a resin dot coating. The weight of the fabric is 1.51 ounces per square yard and it is used in structural support. Interfacing is a support material that is made of tricot, plain weave or nano ones. The construction of this one is a tricot knit which offers better flexibility, superior elastic recovery and good strength. 